CBC Sports presentation. Welcome to CFL 85 on CBC. The best of Canadian professional football. Presented by Carling O'Keefe Sports. Bringing the sports world home to you. By Ford of Canada, where quality is more than a commitment, quality is job one. Petro Canada, dealers and agents across Canada. Our energy is Canada. And now, for all the action, let's join our CBC Sports Crew. The final game of regular season play for 1985, unfortunately for both the Rough Riders and the Argonauts, they will miss postseason activity. Hi, everybody. Two teams with identical records going into this final game of the season and with similar problems during the course of the year. Both clubs were hit hard by injuries, but the biggest loss incurred at the quarterbacking position, Joe Pow Pow and Conrad Holloway. And, Don, you can lose players on a football team, but you just can't lose your quarterbacks. Conrad Holloway went down. That wasn't bad enough, but Ricky Turner, the guy that was supposed to take his place, he's out of there, too. Two unknowns in there. They couldn't do the job. Out here in Saskatchewan, the same thing. Joe Pow Pow amassing all kind of yardage, breaking all kind of records. All of a sudden, he's down. This football team goes in the tank the same way. Yesterday at the press conference, both coaches, I know, want to win this football game badly. The players, I'm not too sure. It's a nothing game. Ron, is there such a thing as players really wanting to play for next year's contract? Leo, I never did buy that. I just know this. The football players paid to play 16 football games. And once he signs that contract, he's obligated to 16 games. The coach has to hope that during the course of the year, he picked football players that will give him the effort for the entire season. That means 16 football games. I am not a believer that this game today will decide a player's next year's career or anything else. I never was and I never will believe it. We'll come back in a few minutes to see the opening kickoff and see whether these coaches have these players ready to play that last and final game. But for right now, we'll go to Brian Williams at CFL Control. Thank you, Ron Lancaster. Those coaches better have them ready or they'll be looking for a job. That is the coaches, Toronto and Saskatchewan. There's one other game today. Fourth quarter in Montreal. The Concord are trailing the Eskimos. More on that later. Let's take a look at weekend highlights beginning with Friday night in Vancouver. Who is that, the Grim Reaper? I don't know. It's a day late for Halloween, but what the heck? They were having a good time in Vancouver. The Lions clinching first place for the third year in a row. Third quarter, Roy DeWalt to the outstanding Mervyn Fernandez for a 70-yard touchdown. And the Leos had the lead by a score of 15-3. In the fourth quarter, J.C. Watts, much maligned of late, did pass for a five-yard touchdown, but it was too little too late as the British Columbia Lions defeat the Ottawa Roughriders by a touchdown. B.C. wrapping up first place. They will host the Western Final two weeks from today. Regardless of what the Eskimos do this afternoon in Montreal, they will play in the Western Semifinal in Winnipeg against the Blue Bombers one week from this afternoon. That's the Western picture. Let's show you the Eastern Conference. The Hamilton Ticats finish at 8-8. Eight and eight. That is the worst record ever for a first-place team in the CFL. A terrible night, a driving rainstorm, crowd of 15,000 at Iverwin Stadium. Early on in the game, a bit of a surprise. Rick Johnson to Emmanuel Tolbert, a player Toronto should never, ever have released. It's a 70-yard touchdown, 7-0 Calgary. At this point, Al Bruno was a little worried. However, in the third quarter, Kenny Hobart passes for the touchdown to Steve Stapler. The Ticats, as I say, at 500 football, put us first in the Eastern Conference. They host the Eastern Final two weeks from today, the Eastern Semifinal one week from today, either in Ottawa or at Montreal's Olympic Stadium. Toronto, of course, is out of it. And once again, Montreal trailing Edmonton 20 to 16 in the fourth quarter. We'll have highlights from that game at halftime. Also at halftime, CFL Commissioner Doug Mitchell will join me live in the studio and he'll talk with the commentators in Regina. Stay with us. The opening kickoff up next to CFL 85 continues. You're a part of the music. You catch your own kind of tune. When the work day is over, you'll get the music inside of you. Miller Highlight. That's Miller time. It's a cool November afternoon here in Saskatchewan as the Toronto Argonauts prepare to kick off to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 
And the wind could be very much a factor as it quite often is here at Taylor Field. And for the opening quarter, the Toronto Argonauts will have the wind at their back as Hank Alisic prepares to kick off to get this game underway. The fact that it is a cool afternoon with that strong wind and that both teams are out of the playoffs has contributed to what may very well be the Rough Riders' smallest crowd in a long, long while. The ball is going to bounce through the end zone. It was not touched by the Rough Riders. Derek Zeno was the man who watched it roll through the end zone. So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will bring the ball out to the 25-yard line to scrimmage first and 10 from that point. Joe Pawpaw is the starting quarterback for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, a couple changes. Denny Ferdinand and David Conrad start in the offensive backfield, and that means that Craig Ellis, who's been in that offensive backfield all year, will move to the slot back position because of the injury to Ray Elgar. And Craig Ellis could reach a couple of personal milestones this afternoon with a strong performance. Craig Ellis carrying the ball, running out of that slot back position, picking up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. He leads the team in receptions during the course of 85. Well, we said Ellis inside at the slot back position with Ray Elgar. Krista Franch was placed on the injured list because of an Achilles tendon problem. Tracy Henderson is the guy that they've been the happiest with as far as a fine during the season. And Roger Alday, once again, has been their leader up on that office, offensive line. The only guy from the 76 Grey Cup team. The handoff to Denny Ferdinand, and Ferdinand picks up just a yard, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be forced to kick it away on their first offensive series. James Curry was there to make the tackle, and as Brian Williams said, the two coaches could be playing for jobs for next year. There have been all sorts of conjecture. There has been all sorts of conjecture about possible coaching changes in the CFL in 1986 and two of the names that have been mentioned Bob Obilovich and Jack Dutta. Third down punt. It hangs up in that wind and it is taken by Jan Carinci at the midfield stride. He got to the 53 yard line. The ball was fumbled, recovered by the Rough Riders, but the play had already been whistled down. Hole number seven is in there at quarterback. They're counting on him today to have a big game. Conridge, Holloway, Dunder, and Bronk back in there from last week. And the receivers. Danny Barrett's in there at slot back, former quarterback. Stan Washington's relatively new. And their offensive line pretty much the same as finished the last couple games. And talking to them before the game, they're ready to play. First and ten from the 53. Holloway fakes, fires over the middle, and Terry Greer is the man who came up with that football at the 37-yard line for a Toronto Argonaut first down. Defensively, this is the way the Rough Riders line up. Well, the new guy, Charles Bennett, gets his chance to play. Jack Goto's telling me before the game they're anxious to see him play, and they have the opportunity in this game to do that. Linebackers, about the same as they've had all year. Jimmy Hunter is a new one, but he has played, and in the secondary, Bruce Miller gets back on the roster. Throwing deep into the end zone, it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Terry Clear. He was being covered back there by Eddie Ray Walker. You know, Don, I think you're going to see a lot of Conridge Holloway to Terry Greer. Conridge knows that this is possibly Greer's last game, or probably Greer's last game. They've been very close. They've uh, connected on several passes throughout their career with the Toronto Argonauts, and I'm sure that he's going to be looking for them this afternoon. It will be second and 10 Toronto. The ball is at the 37 of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The teams with identical records of five wins and 10 losses. Penalty flag on the play as Holloway throws over the middle. And apparently there was a mix up between the quarterback and the receiver, in this case, Greg Holmes, as the ball was a good 10 yards beyond him. And it appears to be an offside call against Gary Lewis of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, so it will be a second and five play now from the 32. Offside, Saskatchewan number 79, second down repeated. Bud Ulrich is the referee in charge of this afternoon's game, and with that penalty, it will be a repeat of the second down, second and five from the 32-yard line. Gary Lewis, the man who was offside, picked up late in the year from the Ottawa Rough Riders. Penalty flag on the play again. 
And the ball is fumbled, recovered by the Toronto Argonauts. It bounced away from Walter Bender. And Bob Gronk recovered, but it all went for naught, as I believe the penalty is going against the Toronto Argonauts, and this will bring it back anyway. Good job of running, though. The hole was there, but when you saw that referee throw that play, one of those guys blocking down to the inside had a hold of somebody. We're going to see a few fumbles today. When this field gets a little bit wet, a little bit icy, and the ball gets slippery. Referee Bud Ulrich marching off the yardage. It will be second down again. The third time they have played the second down. Holding to run number 34. Second down repeated. The holding call against Bob Bronx. It is now second and 15. Second down, 15 yards to go. No score in the ball game. 12-11 is the time remaining in this opening quarter. Holloway throwing that screen to Terry Greer. He fought his way inside the 35-yard line, but he is about six yards short of a first down. He was stopped there at the 34-yard line, and it was Charles Bennett who got his hands up and uh, may have caused some problems for Terry Greer and Conrad Holloway in trying to pick up the necessary yardage for a first down. I think one thing we're going to see this afternoon, this may be a legitimate field goal, but uh, because it is a nothing game out here this afternoon, I think we're going to see a lot of things happening on third down, a lot of trick plays and pulling out all the stops. Lance Chomick will try a 41-yard field goal, and it is good. So the Toronto Argonauts provide the first scoring statistic of this final regular season game for... The Argos and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. That comes with 11.36 remaining in this opening quarter. Ever since man invented machines to move people, he has sought new ways to defeat the wind's resistance. And now there's a totally new aerodynamic design for this age. Ford brings you the age of Aerostar. Aerostar, take it to the school. Take it to the campsite. Take it to the movies. Take it to the lumber yard or take it to the max. Yes, any way you take it, Aerostar proves its versatility. Aerostar! Ford Aerostar. It's 3-0 here at Taylor Field, Toronto leading Saskatchewan and updating the game from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. The Concords have gone ahead of the Edmonton Eskimos 23-20 with two and a half minutes remaining in that ball game. A very important ball game for Montreal. A win will give them second place in the East and home field advantage for next Sunday's semifinal. Pow Pow over the middle to Craig Gallus. He was unable to break the initial contact and was brought down by the linebacker, William Mitchell, at the 40-yard line. Let's set up that Toronto Argonaut defensive unit for you. Well, Mark Seal is in there for Walter Ballard at the defensive end position. Big Gary Doolin at the middle guard. And James Curry, the leading sacker, is in there at the other defensive end. Linebackers Frank Robinson from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers is playing his first game along with David Marshall. The second game, I guess. William Mitchell and Don Mullen. Penalty flag flies as Pow Pow puts it in the air. Incomplete. He was throwing over the middle intended for Ray Elgard and feelings running rather high and Frank Robinson acts as a peacemaker stepping between a former teammate from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Roger Aldag, and one of his current teammates playing for the Toronto Argonauts. Robinson, one of five new players on the Toronto roster this game from the team that Outside. lost 17-3 to the eight. Montreal Concords last week. Penalty declined. Third down. The offside call against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders declined. And dropping back, Carl Brasley and Jan Carinci for this third down punt. Jerry McGrath stands at his own 26-yard line. Again, he will be kicking into that strong win. The Rough Riders almost got caught with too many men in the field. 
Billy Jackson got off just in time. Jan Carinci dodges a couple of tacklers and gets up to the 40-yard line. He's stopped there by David Conrad. 3-0, the Argos lead him. Well, before the game, we were out on that field, and there were patches of ice that if you stepped on them, you'd, both feet would go out from under you, but they, they used the brush on them with the tractor, and it looks like they've got it pretty well cleaned off right now. I know Conridge Holloway was pretty upset when he walked out on the field and saw the slippery spots. Well, yesterday, they had a wet, heavy snow earlier in the day, rain in the afternoon, and with the temperature dropping to minus five overnight, of course, it froze on the artificial playing surface, but it appears as though they have done a pretty good job of removing the ice. The pass is incomplete. It is intended for Danny Barrett. Barrett, a backup quarterback, has been utilized as a slot back this year in the Canadian Football League product of the University of Cincinnati some people a little surprised including our own Ron Lancaster that Conrad Holloway is the starting quarterback yeah I'm a little surprised I think coming off that knee injury and coming back and playing the last couple weeks they've been very fortunate and with this field slippery today that knee injury he is they found out this year he is the franchise and they might like to have him around next year I think that kind of exemplifies how important that the coaching staff feel that this game is to get a good start for next year. Intended for Terry Greer, incomplete. Well, there is some of the ice that has been pushed off to the side of the field, and uh, it had frozen in large patches all over the playing surface and prior to the game. They had the tractor out there with the brushes removing the ice from the field, and uh, it was very treacherous as far as footing is concerned when the players had initially gone out to test the field prior to their pregame warm-up. Jitter Fields on this punt return. Stopped at the 31 and driven back. 9.23 is the time remaining in the opening quarter. The Toronto Argonauts lead by three with that 49-yard kick by Hank Elizabeth. Start up, just come down. Taste of Miller High Life. That's Miller time. Made silencer. Midas muscle. Fun professional job, too. Top guns are the professionals. And I'm in hurry. He's Russian. Don't provoke me. Fixing now. Ugh. KGB. Kind of good, boys. <laughs> Documents. Midas muffler guarantee. Good for as long as you own your car. I shall report it to the top. Our customers have been doing it for 25 years. The first time these two teams met this season at CNE Stadium in Toronto, the Argonauts scored a 29-25 victory. And despite losing that ball game, Joe Popow set a Ryder Club record completing 35 of 53 passes for 438 yards and one touchdown. His 35 completions established a record for the most in a single game. That's a Rough Rider record. The league record is held by Peter Brock. Gary Zeno takes the pass for a first down. He is stopped at the 43-yard line. Derek Zeno began the year with the Ottawa Rough Riders, excelled on special teams, but was traded to Saskatchewan at the midpoint of the season. Toronto's gone to a 3-4 alignment, which means that the it's a different thing since Walter Ballard's been out of there. They were forced to do that, and since they have Frank Robinson around playing his first game, they're using four linebackers, and when they rush that one from the short side, they just throw it short. Pow Pow completes the pass to Elgar. Elgar, a tough man to haul down. However, he fumbled the football, and it is bounced out of bounds, I believe. It, fortunately for Ray Elgar, went off his knee. He was trying to break away from Carl Braisley. He has had an outstanding year. As a matter of fact, Jack Goddard says he's the best Canadian in the CFL. Well, he has had the year, hasn't he, Leo? He sure has, Ron. I think that Carl Braisley thought that he brushed this ball last as it was jostled out of Elgar's hands. I don't know. It's 
official was right there, though. We've got to give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. A gain of 28. It's first and 10 from the 39. Saskatchewan trails by three. Pow Pow attempting to make up that deficit. The pass intended for Derek Zeno. It's incomplete. He was being covered by Marcellus Green. Pow Pow is now three of five in the passing department. Well, we said they used a three-down line, and that puts these two linebackers inside. And what you do when it, you just kind of blitz right through here and put two men through the same hole, see if they can pick it up. This could be something Toronto want to look at for next year, but I'll tell you what, the Riders picked that up extremely well. And if you can pick it up, you can't blitz. That's the whole idea, surprise. Second and 10 from the 39, 7.58 remaining in the opening quarter. Incomplete, the pass intended to the other side this time for Tony Dennis. The Argos have made up their mind this afternoon that they're going to come after them. As Ron alluded to already, they've come with that middle linebacker blitz, and that time they came with both outside linebackers. Putting a lot of pressure on Joe Popo, he's going to have to throw in a hurry, but with his experience, he ought to be able to pick that up. They send those outside linebackers, Ron, those seam passes and those quick guys from the slots off the line of scrimmage, they should be open. Just keep dumping it in there, and you'll stop those outside linebackers from coming right now. Jerry McGrath stands at the 54 of the Toronto Argonauts for this third down kick. It bounces into the end zone, and Jan Carinci concedes the single point. So with 7.29. Remaining in this opening quarter, it's a 3-1 game, the Toronto Argonauts leading. The champions of Canadian junior football will be declared next Saturday when the Saskatoon Hilltops take on the Ottawa Sooners. That game takes place at Lansdowne Park, and it gets underway at 2 o'clock. The Saskatoon Hilltops versus the Ottawa Sooners next Saturday for the Junior Championship of Canada. And those two teams, Ottawa and Saskatoon, the Hilltops and the Sooners, have had some pretty good battles for that Canadian Junior title over the year. Yeah, it seems every year it's either the Rams or the Hilltops against Ottawa. Ottawa's always there. Ottawa throwing deep for Washington. He, no, they rule no catch at the 35-yard line. He appeared to have the ball, and as he came down, one of the Saskatchewan defenders pulled it away from him. Boy, it was a good throw by Conridge Holloway. He ran a post pattern. He just led him right in there where he should. We're seeing the tail end of the play right now. The ball is right on the money, and when he came down, it looked like he had the football, but uh, he must have he must have gone right through his arms. And, Ron, do I detect an air of cynicism in the stands when they score one point? Do they have that out here in Saskatchewan? I thought they had the greatest fans in the world. Yeah, they're not too happy right now. They're not very happy. And I was, that's what I was laughing at. It was really kind of funny when they made a first down and they were cheered and got the one point they cheered. Reacting rather derisively to any success the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are having in this final game of the season. That time they stopped Walter Bender. Eddie Lowe was over to make the tackle, and the Toronto Argonauts will be kicking. They've had a couple creative things on the radio about this football team, kind of making fun of them. Uh, what was that one that uh, your daughter was telling us about this morning that she heard on the uh, air coming in? Talking about a big Halloween party, but if you think those masks were scary, you should go to Taylor Field Sunday afternoon. It's getting a little tough out here right now. It's been a tough year. Jitter Fields trying to find some running room following that 45-yard punt by Hank Alisic. It does not develop, and the Rough Riders will be scrimmaging from their own 23 when we return to Taylor Field. No tombstone marks the foreign grave of Canada's Blue Nose, but here in the shadows of the Caribbean, you can feel her ghost passing overhead. soul of Canada's original Blue Nose lives on in Blue Nose 2, guardian of Canada's sailing heritage and living history for a new generation. Petro-Canada is proud to sponsor the restoration and maintenance of our national treasure, for with no past to give our children, there can be no future. Petro-Canada, our energy is Canada.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Williams at CFL Control in Toronto. Final score in Montreal, the Concorde with a late touchdown. Defeat the Edmonton Eskimos. Montreal will finish second. They will host the Ottawa Rough Riders next Sunday. We'll have it on CBC. We'll have highlights at halftime. Right now, Don, it is back to you at Taylor Field in Regina. Yes, and congratulations to Gary Durchick. Two games as head coach after replacing Joe Galat. The general manager fired himself from the head coaching position. Gave the job to Durchick and two big victories for the Montreal Concords in their final two games of the season. Defeating the Toronto Argonauts in a must game 17-3 last week and that victory against Edmonton this afternoon. Giving them second place and they will host Ottawa next Sunday in the Eastern semifinal. Ron, Leo, Steve Armitage, and I will be at Olympic Stadium for that game to determine a, an opponent for the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the Eastern Final. And while we're at it, let's congratulate Al Bruno and his Hamilton Tiger Cats coming through last night, winning that final game against the Calgary Stampeders and salting away first place for the first time since 1981. Yes, indeed. The pass complete to Derek Zeno. That will be very close to a first down. Zeno signaling to the official that he does have the first down. However, I don't think the men in stripes need any help in making those decisions. Derek Zeno would like to be able to convince them by simply pointing his finger. I think they do have the first down, but a measurement has been requested and the chain is brought out onto the playing field. Zeno, in the early stages of the season, really did some remarkable things on those punt return teams for the Ottawa Rough Riders. And he created a lot of excitement in the nation's capital. He and Mike Catterbone were paired on the punt return unit. Yes, the order of finish, both east and west, has now been determined. Hamilton, Montreal, Ottawa, and Toronto in that order in the east and in the west. It is British Columbia, Winnipeg, Edmonton, Saskatchewan, and Calgary. Greg Ellis takes the pass and steps out of bounds. Ellis co-leads the CFL in touchdowns scored. He has crossed the goal line 15 times this year, 12 of them rushing. Who does he co-lead with? Glad you asked. Jeff Boyd of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Okay. I'll believe you. Denny Ferdinand. Breaks one tackle, breaks two. He continues to the 52 of the Toronto Argonauts where he's stopped by Dennis Clay. He fumbled he the football, fumbled the football over there, though, and the Toronto Argonauts have recovered. All you've got to do is touch that ball on the way out of bounds. You'll see Denny Ferdinand bust off tackle. He's got a lot of second effort, and uh, he's had a tendency to break some of these loose in the past, but uh, as they close in on him, somebody pulls that ball away. Look at the ball is loose right there. As it goes out of bounds, one of the Toronto Argonauts just touches it. They have control. Well, that has been a problem that has plagued Denny Ferdinand in his pro career, hanging on to that football. He had one particularly bad game earlier this year against the British Columbia Lions. Conrad Holloway had a bad time there in the grasp of Gary Lewis and Billy Jackson. Jackson was blitzing from his linebacking position. Well, what you see, Don, is when he splits and he sprints out, there's no problem. It looked like Billy Jackson was going to get him first, but Lewis come inside, and with Conridge Holloway, I think every time somebody hits him low around the legs like that, it's, it's got to bring a, bit, a little bit of anxiety to that Toronto bench. It brings a little anxiety to him, too. That time, the thing that stops a passer from being effective more than anything else uh, transpired. He tried to step up in the pocket, and the pressure from the middle was there. Second and 16, Terry Greer makes the catch and then has bounced out of bounds at the 35-yard line. I think if Conridge Holloway can get through this game without getting himself banged up, that uh, he's going to have a lot of fun this afternoon. As you see him go back here, it's, you know, he's got getting any pressure right here. He's got his old buddy Terry Greer breaking to the outside. It's just like being out in the park on Sunday afternoon and playing catch. And that's been a combination that's been a winner over the last several years in the Toronto area. Terry Greer this year establishing a club record for yardage, eclipsing the old mark held by Dick Shadow. And again, a completed pass, this time to Jeff Townsend. 
And at the 24-yard line, that will be very close to another first down with 329 remaining in this opening quarter. Just curled Stan Washington at the inside and Terry Greer to the inside and then just take your pick. He had either one of them he wanted and he can very re he knows he can rely on Terry Greer. First down from the 24. Once again, quarterback Conrad Holloway goes down and he very slowly gets to his feet after being decked by Gary Lewis. He's, what's Holloway this time on the hit? It looks like he hurt his wrist a little bit earlier when he had a hard time getting up, and he favors his arm as he's getting up off the ground. And not his leg, so I, it's a plus for him. Gary Lewis was so quick on penetration that time that he got past Tony Atunovic before he really got his head in front of him, and he just beat him on the pressure, that's all. In and out of the hands of Jeff Townsend. Fran McDermott was over defending and may, in fact, have deflected that throw. Well, that's good defense, Leo. Gary, Fran McDermott just sits back there in that zone-type defense, and then when that quarterback cocks that arm to throw, he goes to it, and he arrived about the same time the ball did. You know, as we've mentioned a lot of times throughout the year, too, the farther that quarterback throws the ball, for young listeners, the farther that quarterback throws the ball, the further that that defensive man can react to the ball in the air. And that time it looked like he came about 15 yards to get a hold of it. Lance Chomick with the field goal attempt. It is wide. And Fran McDermott will concede, or will he? Yes, he is going to run around back there and finally give up the single point. And again, I <laughs> never understand the reasoning behind that maneuver. Well, we've said that for the last several ball games now. They're they, they look like they're trying to save time, but actually they're taking as much of their own time as they are their opponent's time at this stage of the ball game, plus the risk factor of possibly letting that ball slide out of their hands when they're fooling around back there and let the opponent fall on it for a touchdown, run. Well, if you want to defend them, they're going against the wind, and I think when you're going against the wind, you use up as much time as you can. And, you know, right now I look, there's 159. If you can use up a couple seconds and have to punt, maybe you'll get the opportunity to punt with the wind. But I think teams do it with a hurricane at their back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that, Don. I was about ready to jump on it. Popov completes the pass for a big first down to Tony Dennis. Now, the Rough Riders have made an adjustment. They were slated to start with Conrad and Ferdinand at the running back position. They have moved Dennis into that slot back spot and Ellis to running back. This is uh, the, Go ahead, Ron. Well, that what they wanted to do, they've been trying to get Tony Dennis into the ball game all year. And as you see, he's a pretty good pass receiver. That's a pretty good catch reaching behind him. And, so what they've done is just sit Conrad down and play Dennis, and Dennis gets the opportunity to play because of his injury to France. Out of Simon Fraser University, a big first down, a gain of 21 on that last play. This time to Denny Ferdinand, and he has a gain of nine more, stopped by middle linebacker William Mitchell. Well, these two teams will be watching the action next Sunday afternoon, and we hope you'll be watching as well the Eastern semifinal from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. As the Ottawa Rough Riders visit the Montreal Concords, you'll see it beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern time on CBC television. Next Sunday, the Western semifinal takes place at Winnipeg Stadium. The Blue Bombers hosting the Edmonton Eskimos. Edmonton having won both regular season games against Winnipeg. It's interesting that both East and West, the teams that finished third, were winners of both games against the team that finished second. It is surprising, but here's what we always look at with Saskatchewan. They like to pull Roger all day and lead him and then have Denny Ferdinand block out. And they hope that that will get them the yard or so that they need. You see, all dag pull. He should lead through. Ferdinand should try to make that block, get a down block by Laurie Skullroot, and hopefully make a first down. And you know that, Leo, you've got to be able to make those short yardage situations. Yeah, it looks like they wasted two blockers on one guy on that. The one blocker that turns out, the other guy should lead through. They get it this time, and they'll go all the way. Craig Ellis will score the touchdown, his 16th of the season. And that's the way it should be run. That thing opened up like a suitcase. Just what you said, Leo. There's no doubt about it on this side of the football field. What's the job? Only this time, Neil Quilder leads through. They block out right here, and the great block down. But watch the hole. There it comes. Ferdinand kicks out the backer. The guard leads up the hole. And when that back gets through there, he can't believe it. He just can't believe he's that far in the open.
for Craig Ellis, a 45-yard touchdown, his 16th of the season. And the point after by Dave Ridgway puts the Rough Riders in front for the first time this afternoon. And that touchdown by Craig Ellis comes with just 11 seconds remaining in the, in the opening quarter. 9-4. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders now lead. Well, they get in that short yardage defense, and they block down with that offensive end or the man playing on the outside and kick out and lead through. That safety has got to come up there and make this play. There it is. Elgard blocking down. There's the Quiller hole. leads through. Now just go ahead and run. Well, I don't know where the safety was. There was nobody there. Mitchell was the closest guy from his linebacker position coming across the middle. You know what I think? I really think they thought that with third and one, they was going to quarterback sneak it, and they all stacked the middle. And he came outside and had great results with it. I remember one time we did that when I was coaching with the Toronto Argonauts. In a short yardage situation. They gave the ball to Dave Thielen. He hit the same kind of a play and went about 60 yards for a touchdown. That's dangerous because there's nobody back there. Bob Ronk took that short kickoff and was stopped by Rick Moore. And six seconds remain in this opening quarter. Ronk got back to the 33-yard line. That touchdown for Craig Ellis is 16th of the year. The Rough Rider Club record is 18, and I think a lot of folks would immediately think that George Reed probably holds that mark, but it is another Rough Rider grade of a previous era, Ken Carpenter, who established the single-season team record of 18. I would have guessed George Reed. That's interesting. I knew Kenny Carpenter when he was a coach in the old United Football League. This is the reverse with Terry Greer. He could throw, but Greer won't get a chance as he is being pursued. Now he dumps it off. And the closest receiver was an offensive lineman, Tony Antunovic. The fans react thinking there should have been a flag. They felt that Greer simply threw it away, but there was no flag, and that's the end of the first quarter. for every yard. Now there's only one left. There's no second best for you in the game you play or the beer you chew. That's why you just say O.B. for that great taste in here. O.B. O.B. Oh yeah. You just say O.B. If you come right down to it, I think you could honestly say that the best railroaders are with CP Rail, from what I've witnessed. I'm trying not to be prejudiced. <laughs> There's a lot of us that take pride in our job. The yardman, the engineman, the trainmen are all professionals. We're all professionals in a vocation that's much different than anything else. They work uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They could be called at 3 in the morning, 5 in the morning. And they're a very adaptable and flexible bunch of people. I work the CP railway line. I go where the steel rail guides me. I'm bound to haul a heavy load down an independent road. I work the CP railway line. CP rail. CP rail. CP rail. Helping Canada move forward. Okay. Well, as we prepare to start the second quarter, let's take a look at that final play of the opening quarter. You'll see Rick Moore. He's the contained man on the side the play was coming, and he penetrated. And when you penetrate when that play is going away from you, you've got to go to the deepest part of the backfield and make sure that nothing's coming back. He gave up that contain. You didn't get a good chance to see it, but he gave up that contain, and as a result, Greer got around to a position where he could throw the ball, but the coverage was there. Well, Conrad Holloway tried to go to Terry Greer again. Eddie Ray Walker may have got a hand on that football on the low throw to knock it away, but now the Toronto Argonauts will be forced to kick. 8-4 is the score. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders leading. Well, you see, he just drives his defender off, turn around and hook, the ball's thrown low. But Eddie Ray Walker did react pretty well to that football, even if it had been thrown up. He might have still knocked it down.
Hank Alessic kicking into the wind. Derek Zeno trying to get to the outside. He got a good block from Ferdinand who stepped into William Mitchell, but he ran out of room on the sidelines. A kick of 30 yards by Hank Alessic. Well, the Rough Riders scored a touchdown going against the wind in the opening quarter. Let's see how they fare in the second quarter with the wind at their backs. Carl Brazley, a double Shenley nominee for the Toronto Argonauts in this 1985 season. He has eight interceptions this year. He needs two to set a club record. Ooh, coming from the backside, Don Moon had a clear path to quarterback Joe Papa. Well, we've, That's we've, what linebackers dream of. In the first quarter, Lance Chomick put Toronto on the board with a 41-yard field goal. Saskatchewan replied with a single by McGrath. Then Toronto got a single from Lance Chomick, a 45-yard touchdown by Craig Ellis, and the convert makes it an 8-4 football game. It will be second and 17. Good protection for Pow Pow. He is intercepted. David Marshall grabs the throw and brings it back to the 47-yard line. So with 13-13 remaining in this first half, the Toronto Argonauts will take over first and 10 at the Saskatchewan 47. Ever since man invented machines to move people, he has sought new ways to defeat the wing's resistance. And now there's a totally new aerodynamic design for this age. Ford brings you the age of Aerostar. Aerostar, it's easy to get in, easy to drive, easy to stretch out in, easy to handle, easy to park. Aerostar, it just makes life a little easier. Aerostar. Ford Aerostar. Next Saturday on Sports Weekend from Australia, the Melbourne Cup, and from Toronto, the Royal Winter Fair. It all starts at 3 Eastern. Well, Toronto linebackers just dropped way back. They dropped out of there in a the zone, and right there, you see Pow Pow trying to throw it over a linebacker. And when they get that far deep, you cannot do that. And that's just a badly thrown football. You should have taken underneath and be happy with it. Don't turn it over. Turning it overs will kill you. Statistically, this is what happened during the opening 15 minutes. The Rough Riders with 155 yards. The Toronto Argonauts have yet to pick up a rushing yard while Saskatchewan has 69. 45 of that total coming on the touchdown run by Craig Ellis. Ron Lancaster, you came up with a rather interesting statistic in going over the notes prior to the game regarding the teams that have had the least success in running the football this year. Okay, we'll talk about it right after the play. Now, I... Holloway throws complete to Bob Bronk, very close to a first down. You know, they always talk about running the football, and, and like we've said many times, when you have a Willard Reeves in the backfield and stuff, you have to use them, and it's coincidental probably, but the way it reads this year in the final statistics, the three teams that missed the playoffs ranked 7, 8, and 9 in rushing yardage, and I think that tells you that without some sort of a running game, they're not averaging 100 yards on the ground, and without some sort of a running game, you're going to be in trouble. Well, that tells me one thing, Ron, that there should be more rushing in the Canadian game. From a spectator point of view and from a point of view as far as the coach is concerned, to have a consistent winning team. Well, perhaps we can discuss some of your suggestions for a solution to the problem with Commissioner Doug Mitchell at halftime. Bender tried to pick up first down yardage, and he was thrown for a loss. He was stopped at the 40-yard line, so the Toronto Argonauts are still looking for that first rushing yard in this ball game. Well, what was funny there is like, you won't hear uh, Rick Moore's name announced for making that tackle, but he made the play. He got into the backfield and forced that back to hesitate. Then that allowed Lewis and the rest of them to make the hit. But Rick Moore made the play. He's the stir man. He gets in there and stirs things up, Stirs makes the up. consistency down, makes the uh, ball carrier uh, break his stride and slow down. And when that happens, the rest of them swarm him. Lance Chomick will attempt the field goal from 47 yards out. 11.52 is the time left to play in this first half. The kick is long enough. It is good. An excellent kick by Chomick into that very stiff breeze from 47 yards out. 
And it's now 8-7. The Rough Riders leading Toronto. As I said, Brian Williams will have Commissioner Doug Mitchell at CFL Control Studio at halftime. And we will also be talking with the Commissioner. And Leo Cahill has a couple of interesting proposals to put to the Commissioner as far as changes that he thinks might be successful if implemented in the Canadian Football League. We'll talk about them at halftime. And if they don't work, Leo, we'll blame you. What else is new? <laughs> the Rough Riders, with that very strong wind at their back, have opted to have the Toronto Argonauts kick off following that 47-yard Chomick field goal, feeling that they will improve upon their field position rather than scrimmaging at the 35. You know, that is amazing because Chomick hit that ball unbelievably on the field goal into that win. That's a pretty strong win looking at the flags at both ends of the stadium. I'm kind of anxious to see how far he does kick it now. And you saw what uh, happened on that original kickoff. It went right through the end zone. Alisic uh, only took about three steps and just bounced right through the end zone. While we got a little time here, there's a couple former Saskatchewan residents that happen to live on the same street with Jan Carinci, Brad and Angus McCourt. And Jan Carinci asked me if I wouldn't wish them the very best on their 41st anniversary today. And so, Brad and Angus, from Jan Carinci and from all of us, congratulations. 41 years, I'll congratulate him. <laughs> Well, Hank Alisic prepares to kick off from the 35-yard line. One point in the ball game. Saskatchewan leading. And that was a good decision by the Rough Riders to have them kick off, although Derek Zeno was hit as he tried to uh, take that ball in the dead run. He spun away and still got it back to the 41-yard line. Well, I know I'll probably put a curse on Derek Zeno for saying this, but... Uh, as aggressive as he is and as hard as he runs, he very seldom fumbles the football on those exchanges. And uh, you see some punt returners and kickoff returners that have that extra effort like a Danny Ferdinand or even Jan Carinci and their intent to get that extra yardage. They have a tendency to let the ball go. First and 10 from the 41-yard line. Saskatchewan leads by a single point. How foul to Derek Zeno. He hangs on to the ball, and Marcellus Green hangs on to him. We talked about Zeno being tough. Anybody who lets somebody brand a horseshoe on their arm is tough. I'll go along with that. <laughs> I'll tell you who's a lot tougher than the guy that lets him do it. <laughs> the guy that does it. <laughs> Gain of seven, it's second and three. Pow Pow has hit on eight of 12 attempts. The pitch to Craig Ellis, he has a first down. A play like that, Don, is, is very important to an offensive football team. Anytime it's second down and three, and you can't run the football and get three yards, you're gonna be in trouble. And if you wanna keep drives alive, you've gotta convert them. And that's what they did. Second and three, a little toss to Ellis, and he just went and got a good job up front. First and ten from the 52-yard line. Papa was looking for Tracy Henderson. William Mitchell was pressuring the Saskatchewan quarterback, and it will be second and ten. Joe Papa had some earlier success with the screen pass to Ferdinand. Uh, you know, the way those linebackers are dropping out there on that 3-2 uh, defense, uh, it might be a pretty good play. Complete to Ray Elgar. This will be a Saskatchewan first down to the 43-yard line. Dennis Clay came over to make the tackle. Well, that Elgard is a horse. I don't think I've ever seen one guy bring him down all year long. When he catches the football, it takes a couple guys to bring him down, or at least he drags the one guy five yards. Well, he's built like a linebacker, 6'3", 225 pounds. Can't teach him to be that big. 
I don't think when Elgar came in this league, anybody expected him to have the career that he had. He has really come on, and as you guys say, he's really tough. He's got good hands. He hangs on to everything. Papa going for broke. Ooh. Incomplete. He was looking into the end zone for Tracy Henderson. And Papa paid the price as he waited and waited and fired deep and released the ball just as he was hit. You're going to see him as he goes back here. Just as soon as he releases the ball, you know where he got his name, Pow Pow, because they really come in there and put it on him. When you get sandwiched like that, it smarts. What a season Papa was having until the time of his injury. And the Rough Rider fortunes plummeted when Papa went down. Over the middle and hanging on to the ball is Tony Dennis. He paid the price in making the catch, but he hung on to the football. Boy, he just went down the field. He put three receivers to the wide side of the field. That brought the Toronto secondary over. And then Dennis went down and split the seam. You're going to see right down that hash mark. There's three receivers over here. Joe takes one look. Now he's looking for him. He splits those defenders and watch the hit in the back that he takes just as he catches the football and hangs on. I can see why they want to get him into the game more. Oh, boy, if he doesn't do anything else, he's showing me he's got a lot of courage. Craig Ellis got to the line of scrimmage and not much further. David Marshall, who made a big interception earlier for the Toronto Argonauts, led the tackling contingent who brought down Craig Ellis. Uh, Joe Pau reverts to what uh, he normally does. He's going to be thinking back to that pass out of the flat to Elgard, and he's going to put Elgard to the wide side of the field here where he is and do the same thing and try to get him the football. Second and 10 with 7.45 remaining in this first half. Over the middle, he was looking for Tony Dennis again. Got a Dennis play. was held up, apparently. Yes, indeed. The signal from referee Bud Ulrich. Dennis protested immediately to the official. Four pass interference. Round number 73. First and ten. The linebacker, David Marshall was defending against Tony Dennis. Yeah, you're going to get a good look at it. Here's the receiver. As he comes in and tries to cross underneath, this man is going to really jostle him, and the referee in the back is going to see it. Watch. He's looking at him. He comes under. He gives him a shot as the ball's being thrown, and you're going to get called for that every time. And you know what? That's exactly what you tell a linebacker to do when those backs cross in front of you or when those receivers cross in front of you. Step up and jar them. Smack him. That's exactly what he did, and he got called for it. So it's first and ten. Popow completes the pass to Derek Zeno at the two-yard line. And credit Jack Gotta with that play because someone came over to the sidelines and Jack Gotta called the play into him and he, he went in and called it to Joe Popow and it was very effective. They're going to clear it out on the inside and then Zeno just goes down and breaks across into the middle. It's a hard pass to throw, a hard pass to catch because you're running into the ball coming at you. Good, good reception. So the Rough Riders send in their short yardage team. They have the ball at the one. Ray Gallus into the end zone for his 17th touchdown of the year. <laughs> Made that drive look awful easy. Plays designed to go outside, Leo. Yeah, but Craig Ellis is really good at this. Watch Roger Aldick, number 44, come around, and he just turns up inside and tries to hit anything available. There's nobody there, but Craig Ellis said the quickest way home is straight home, and he went right straight up the middle and just catapulted right over the top for the six points. Well, there haven't been many occasions when a non-kicker has gone past the 100-point mark in scoring, but... Craig Ellis has just eclipsed the century mark. He now has 102 points for the year, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders lead 15 to 7. Please. My dad works far away. He digs and digs looking for oil and gas. It's a very important job. He wants me to have energy when I grow up. That's why he has to work so hard now. He'll come home soon, and I'm glad, because I love him. 
Canada's future is at the heart of everything we do. Petro-Canada. Our energy is Canada. They've given you the advantage and only moments to make it count. There's no second best for you in the game you play or the beer you choose. That's why you just say O.V. for that great taste in beer. O.V. O.V. Oh yeah, you just say O.V. Break Cup Day on CBC. Warm up for the big game at 12 Eastern with Break Cup Countdown. Then at 1.30, it's time for Canadian football's Fall Classic. For the very best seat in the house, catch Grey Cup 85 on CBC. Yes, indeed. You'll see all the excitement of Grey Cup week on CBC television. But leading up to it, we've got the Eastern semifinal next Sunday. The Montreal Concord at Olympic Stadium hosting the Ottawa Rough Riders. This is Jeff Townsend on the kickoff return. He got back to the 24-yard line, stopped there by Billy Jackson. And we've also got the Western Final. Two weeks from today, from the Dome in Vancouver as the British Columbia Lions will host either the Winnipeg Blue Bombers or the Edmonton Eskimos for the right to represent the West in Grey Cup 85. There was a penalty flag on the play, and apparently the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will kick off again. That's Craig Ellis on the sidelines with his stocking cap on, keeping warm and saying, give me that ball. And you'll see him right here as he gets the ball and what he does with it. Roger Aldeg pulls out. He just goes right over the spot that Roger pulled out. Nobody filled it. He said the quickest way home was right straight through there. And Roger said, I made a good block, did I? And Craig said, he didn't have to block anybody. I ran right through where you left. You'll take an oath that that's exactly what they said. I, I can't believe Roger would say that much. Roger hasn't <laughs> talked that much all year. No. <laughs> he's quite a guy. Roger said, which way did he go, Judge? <laughs> which way did he go? Saskatchewan's David Conrad was offside on the kickoff. And now Ridgeway has the ball pinned on the kicking tee again. This one bounces away from Bender. He's still having problems. He's losing it in the end zone. And finally, he gets help from Jeff Townsend. And Townsend picks it up. That's going to be a two-pointer. One point. One point. Didn't he take it back into the end zone? He, he never, never had, never had never control, had control though, did he? That's right. Got to have control. You got to carry it back in. Yeah. So the Saskatchewan Rough Riders pick up a single point on the kickoff as Bender had all sorts of problems trying to pick up that football. You know what he should have done at that stage, Ron? He should have, like a, a good third baseman will do, let that ball go and see if it don't roll out of bounds. That's what I thought he was going to do over there for a minute, but when he made that effort to pick it up, that ball was just slipping and sliding everywhere. First and 10, Toronto. The ball is at the 35-yard line. They started the game with Conrad Holloway at quarterback. They stay with Holloway, and the pitch goes to Bender, and Bender picks up three yards. He's stopped by Scott Reddle. Joe Pow Pow hurt early in the year after getting off to a great start this year for Saskatchewan. And when he went down, Rough Rider Hopes went with him. Here's the key again. It's Rick Moore, and he's not going to get any credit for the tackle, but watch him force him to turn that thing back inside. If you go in there, you're going to get very little yardage. Back to the live action. Sideline pattern for Terry Greer. No, he was out of bounds. It will be third and long, and... Conrad Holloway seems to be intent on getting that ball to Terry Greer. I think he's only thrown to Jeff Townsend, the only other receiver he's gone to this afternoon. And Bob Brock with the screen one, one time. There's no question that Terry Greer is the favorite target this afternoon. Hank Elisic stands at his own 22-yard line with 5.30 remaining in the half for this third down kick. Into that wind, it's a short one, and it's taken by Jitter Fields, and he dances to the 54-yard line. That was only a 25-yard kick 
by Hank Elizick. So the Rough Riders will have excellent field position when we return to Taylor Field. How do you remember to play Lotto 649? I have a friend who reminds me. <laughs> Boy, thank you, Elmer. Darling, it's Mother. Did you floss? Don't forget dinner Sunday. Did you play 649 Wednesday? Never mind, you can still make Saturday's draw. I have a really bad memory. <laughs> 649! Good bird! Lotto 649! Got my ticket, Hank. Thanks for the reminder. How do you remember to play Lotto 649? And just a reminder, be with us after the game as our CBC commentators select the Carling O'Keefe Game Star. Well, the flame who has followed the Saskatchewan Rough Riders for a number of years is perched outside Taylor Field for this football game. And if that wind continues to blow and that cape stays on his back. He may become airborne before this game is over. <laughs> I wish the wind was the other way so we could see him fly by. <laughs> he's going someplace. <laughs> Somebody told me you auditioned for that thing and didn't make it. I didn't make it. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what he's doing outside the field. It's amazing. I, you know, he's always been right over there and he's not there this week. Maybe it's ticket prices or the fire marshal has decided that it is not safe to have him in the stands. Movement at the line of scrimmage. There's a penalty flag. This should be a free one. How about Brasino? He makes the catch. A diving grab at the 15-yard line. Oh, what a great catch. And as you said, Don, Joe Paupau used that experience that he had. He saw that movement on the line of scrimmage, knew that the defense made layup, uh, let up a little bit, and just lofted that ball as far as he could throw it. What I, Zeno was there. What I like. Toronto defense is outside, only to find first down. What I like is Pow Pow give a real good pump action fake with his arm, and at that time, Zeno took off and just went right behind the corner. Marcellus Green and in that great catch, Leo. He laid out and got the football. You know, we talked about before about guys playing for next year's contract. He's a guy that doesn't have to play for next year's contract the way he's playing. Swing pass for Craig Ellis, or David Conrad, I should say, and it's incomplete. Well, I think you're going to find that Joe Paupau let that ball go because somebody gave him a, a twist, and he was in pain when he let the ball go. I didn't think he was going to get up. Well, he was very fortunate, Leo, because... I think we're going to get a look at it here on Joe Popov. He's very fortunate he's not hurt. Watch when he lets it go. Somebody's going to roll over, and his left leg's going to be trapped underneath him. I think it's Don Moan, number 36. He's got it bent backwards. And watch one of the green jerseys come to his help here in a minute. He was very fortunate. Popov is intercepted at the goal line by Marcellus Green. Marcellus Green initially was going to try and get out of that end zone. And then he decided to stay right there. And it's a good thing he did not take about another half step or he would have been out of the end zone. He's going to get a back good look he, at it, Lil. Look at him here. He's got plenty of time to throw. He steps up inside, sets himself, and let it go. Boy, he just, you know, there's two white shirts distance that he threw that ball that probably could have gotten to it and he threw one right in Marcellus Green's hands. I just don't know why he would do that under those circumstances. I think he got close to the goal line. I think he was fooled by the defense and never saw Marcellus Green because it was thrown too perfectly for him. It was right in Marcellus' hand. Second interception for the Argonauts this afternoon. First by David Marshall, that one by Marcellus Green. It's a first down at the 25-yard line and Walter Bender is stopped at the 28. 3.55 is the time remaining in this opening quarter. It's 16-7, Saskatchewan leading Toronto. Boy, had they scored on that touchdown there at this stage of the football game, they may have been able to take this game out of sight, but that was a big break for the Argos right there. We talk about Eddie Lowe, number 40. Well, I'll tell you, he will hit you. He's, he's played well for them in every game this year. He's not very tall, but he's a good linebacker. He got into that whole quick. On second and seven, the ball is deflected, incomplete, intended for Jeff Townsend. Brad McDermott nearly came up with the interception.
This is one-on-one -on -one coverage, and number 29, McDermott's in a zone defense in the back. He's going to help out wherever that quarterback looks, but Bruce Miller had excellent coverage on him, and then McDermott gets over there to clean up. It's interesting that the two cornerbacks were Saskatchewan Miller and Eddie Ray Walker both attended Southern Mississippi. Yeah, they were teammates down there. That is surprising, you know, after you leave college to end up on the same team again. Excellent kick by Alisic into that win. Zeno takes it at the 46-yard line. Penalty flags on the play. And Zeno is brought down at the 46. But there are penalty flags back at the midfield stripe, and we'll sort it all out for you when we return to Taylor Field. Now, whenever you get the urge to paint, Paint Pal, the paint machine from Campbell Housefell. Paint Pal covers walls, ceilings, and trim without covering you with drops, drips, and splatters. Just in time. Paint Pal, it makes painting good, clean fun. From Campbell Housefell. Lowen is the one window that fits right into your home and lifestyle. The beauty of it is, Lowen windows are energy efficient, airtight, and available in your choice of finish. Every window is precision crafted and hand inspected to ensure long-lasting value. That's why Lowen windows are worth looking into. When you're window shopping, choose Lowen. We make you look good. Ask your building supply dealer for Lowen windows. Back at Taylor Field with 2.50 remaining in this first half. Saskatchewan leading 16 to 7. And the legal block on that punt return by Derek Zeno took the riders back. Joe Popow gets the yardage right back, firing the strike to Ray Elgar at the midfield strike. At halftime, we'll have highlights of Montreal's victory this afternoon over the Edmonton Eskimos. And we'll also talk with Canadian Football League Commissioner Doug Mitchell. He'll be in the studio in Toronto at CFL Control with Brian Williams. Ron Leo and I will be speaking to him from here at Taylor Field. The ball is fumbled, and who has recovered? The Argonaut players feel they have the football. Saskatchewan feels they came up with the ball, but the officials, I believe, feel that Craig Ellis got it back after it bounced away from him. As a matter of fact, Craig Ellis picked up about a yard before losing control of that football with 2.12 remaining in the half. Tracy Henderson goes wide to the right. Derek Zeno splits to the left. Good protection. Pow Pow throws the strike. Craig Ellis trying to get a first down. He's going to be stopped about two, maybe three yards short by Frank Robinson. Well, Craig Ellis on that play caught the ball out in the flat, and when he turned around, there was four white jerseys all bracketed right down the white stripe, and he didn't know he had any place else to go, so being the tough guy that he is, he just put his head down and tried to drive for that extra yardage. Fans react thinking that Jack Gotta, the head coach, should send out the short yardage unit. It is third and two. And there seems to be a lot of confusion as the Rough Riders send out that kicking unit. And they had better hurry to uh, get this play underway. Ridgeway will be trying a field goal. I think the Rough Riders. Attempted that field goal with just 11 men on the field. They were one man short amidst all that confusion. And the kick by Ridgeway hit the upright. I was surprised they didn't just go for the field goal. With that wind behind him, I know Ridgeway can reach it. And it had the distance, just hit the upright. Well, it was the punting unit out there, or the short yardage unit, and then finally the field goal unit. So it's not surprising they wound up with only 11 players on the field. Let's well, see, the ball's got plenty of distance. Bang, hit the outside of the post. Hits the other side, it goes in. 
So with 131 remaining in the half, the score holds at 16-7, Saskatchewan leading Toronto. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Penalty flag on the play, and Billy Jackson stepped into Bob Bronk at the same instant the football arrived. But I think the penalty is going to go against the Toronto Argonauts. I'm surprised that there haven't been a few more of these exchanges of frustrations and fisticuffs out here today because both of these teams I know are very frustrated about being out of the playoffs. Toronto number 54, penalty decline, second down. Tony Antunovic guilty of the holding. The Rough Riders declined the penalty as Jackson was all over Bronk after a pickup of a yard and a half. To the right of your screen, to the left of your screen, I should say, that was Antunovic grabbing Lewis by the leg. And three people put pressure on Conrad Holloway, and Jimmy Hunter finally decided to take matters into his own hands, and he dove over a couple of would-be blockers to get Holloway for a loss. Yep. I think it was Rick Moore Once again. Once again, Rick Moore. Boy, Rick he was in to the backfield in a hurry. Yep. Got in there and made him uh, pull the ball down and look for a place to run, and when he did that, he was lost. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders with 110 remaining in the half have called a timeout. That's a good move, Don, at this time. With a minute and 10 seconds, I don't really believe that Elisic, when he punts this football, is going to get it to midfield, and that's going to give them time to, to maybe score another touchdown. Plenty of time. Saskatchewan and Toronto met for the first time this year on the 12th of July at CNE Stadium in Toronto, and the Argonauts won that one by a score of 29-25. Well, that was a good football game the night they, they met in CNE Stadium, and... If I remember right, talking to Jack Goda one day, they was really upset at a placement on a third down sneak by Joe Pow Pow that cost them possession of the football because they felt that they were in around a 25-yard line and in position to win it. Well, the season will come to an end for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders this afternoon, but there seems to be a feeling in the Saskatchewan capital that the next week might prove rather interesting because there apparently has developed quite a rift between Coach Jack Goda and General Manager Bill Quinter. And there is some speculation that one or the other must go. Yeah, it's a tough situation when you miss the playoffs. You don't need that to compound the problem. Well, that's a good kick. Zeno takes the ball at his 52-yard line. Finds a hole. He has speed, but saving it perhaps was Bob Gronk who came across and went over the top of Dan Carinci to get to Derek Zeno. Derek Zeno's made some good catches today, but this is as good a play. Watch him. Tries to get outside, and he manages to do that. They didn't get the containment on him where they need it. He was like one step from going the distance. Bob Bronk saved the day, I believe. That's as good an open field tackle as you'll ever want to see, especially against a guy like Zeno. There's that screen. David Conrad fights his way inside the 30-yard line, stopped by Dennis Clay. I've been a little surprised that Joe didn't come back to that more often than during the course of this first half because they, they're getting an excellent drop by their linebackers, their defensive line are penetrating, and that's just a natural for them. The Rough Riders in their hurry-up offense. Pow Pow threw this one out of bounds. That stops the clock with 45 seconds remaining. See Derek Zeno down there talking to the official. He felt Marcellus Green paired him or grabbed him, wouldn't allow him to go downfield, but... Joe was just throwing that away. There was no one open, and that's a good move. Kill that clock, because he's still got 45 seconds, and he can score from here. They must be uh, putting some real pressure on Elgard, because he hasn't gone to Elgard lately. In a key situation like this, that's the guy I'd be looking for. Here it comes. Over the middle, intended for David Conrad, and David Marshall was there to break the play up. So with 40 seconds remaining and on third down, the Rough Riders send out the field goal unit. David Ridgway has that strong wind at his back. This field goal attempt from 36 yards out shouldn't really prove much of a problem for number 36, David Ridgway. 
It is good. And with 36 seconds remaining in the half, the Rough Riders now lead 19-7. And that ball didn't land until it was completely over the dead ball line, so he kicked that ball in the air about 36, 46, 56, 61 yards. That's a pretty good punch. It's been a frustrating season for Bob Obilovich, the former coach of the year in the Canadian Football League, directing the fortunes of the Toronto Argonauts. When Conrad Holloway went down, I don't think many Argo supporters anticipated the problems the team would encounter the rest of the way. Walter Bender got out to the 36-yard line. No, Don, Leo made that point very clear in the opening that, you know, you can lose football players, but not the guy that you've been counting on to do the job, and that's the quarterback. When you lose your quarterback, you have serious problems. How about losing your quarterback and then having the guy that's going to step in there and take his place go down, too? So you're really scrambling. You're going out and get a couple guys that nobody ever heard of and say, it's all up to you to make us win. And uh, when they don't make a team win, then the rest of the team starts saying, well, as soon as Conridge comes back, we'll be all right. Conridge was delayed getting back, and so the season dwindled away. He completes the pass to Stanley Washington for a first down for the Argos at the 48-yard line. Jimmy Hunter was there to make the tackle. Stanley Washington played briefly with Saskatchewan last year. He has been with Toronto throughout this 1985 season, but this is the first game in which he has played. Three seconds remaining. The clock is running. This will be the final play of the half. Holloway trying to set up a screen with Walter Bender. It falls to the ground, and that ends the first half here at Taylor Field in Regina as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders go to the dressing room with a 12-point lead. Now stay tuned for our halftime show. New technological breakthroughs have enabled Lemmer spray systems to make your painting even easier with or without spraying experience. Well-balanced and simple to operate, the Lemmer airless paint sprayers give you quick professional results. A variety of accessories are available to make Lemmer paint sprayers... ...backers, their defensive line are penetrating and that's just a natural for them. Rough Riders in their hurry-up offense. Pow, pow this one out of bounds that stops the clock with 45 seconds remaining see Derek Zeno down there talking to the official he felt Marcellus Green paired him or grabbed him wouldn't allow him to go downfield but Joe was just throwing that away there was no one open and that's a good move kill that clock because he's still got 45 seconds and he can score from here it must be uh putting some real pressure on Elgard because he hasn't gone to Elgard lately. In a key situation like this, that's the guy I'd be looking for. Here it comes. Over the middle intended for David Conrad and David Marshall was there to break the play up. So with 40 seconds remaining and on third down, the Rough Riders send out the field goal unit. David Ridgway has that strong wind at his back. This field goal attempt from 36 yards out shouldn't really prove much of a problem for number 36, David Ridgway. It is good. And with 36 seconds remaining in the half, the Rough Riders now lead 19-7. That ball didn't land until it was completely over the dead ball line, so he kicked that ball in the air about 36, 46, 56, 61 yards. That's a pretty good punch. It's been a frustrating season for Bob Obilovich, the former coach of the year in the Canadian Football League, directing the fortunes of the Toronto Argonauts. When Conrad Holloway went down, I don't think many Argo supporters anticipated the problems the team would encounter the rest of the way. Walter Bender got out to the 36-yard line. 
No, Don, Leo made that point very clear in the opening that, you know, you can lose football players, but not the guy that you've been counting on to do the job, and that's the quarterback. When you lose your quarterback, you have serious problems. And how about losing your quarterback and then having the guy that's going to step in there and take his place go down, too? So you're really scrambling. You're going out and get a couple guys that nobody ever heard of and say, it's all up to you to make us win. And uh, when they don't make a team win, then the rest of the team starts saying, well, as soon as Conridge comes back, we'll be all right. Conridge was delayed getting back, and so the season dwindled away. He completes the pass to Stanley Washington for a first down for the Argos at the 48-yard line. Jimmy Hunter was there to make the tackle. Stanley Washington played briefly with Saskatchewan last year. He has been with Toronto throughout this 1985 season, but this is the first game in which he has played. Three seconds remaining. The clock is running. This will be the final play of the half. Holloway trying to set up a screen with Walter Bender. It falls to the ground, and that ends the first half here at Taylor Field in Regina as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders go to the dressing room with a 12-point lead. Now stay tuned for our halftime show. New technological breakthroughs have been favoring Saskatchewan and Conrad Holloway as he tried to set up, fumbled the football, and Saskatchewan has recovered. There was also a penalty flag on the play. It was a call against Toronto. It was declined. Billy Jackson, I think it was, coming from the outside, is going to get his hand in there right there and flip it loose. Holding. And now it's anybody's Toronto ball. offense. Declined. First down. Well, that's a very inauspicious beginning of this third quarter for the Toronto Argonauts. And if the Saskatchewan Rough Riders do take this ball in, it's going to be a long afternoon. If the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had scored the time they had a chances, it would already be a long afternoon. You're right. First and ten, Saskatchewan at the 21 of Toronto. Pow Pow trying to dump it off to Craig Ellis. Cliff Hewitt had moved up from his safety position to cover. It will be second and ten. Coming into the game, Ellis required 13 catches to break the Riders' single-season record of 102 set by Joey Walters back in 1982. Ellis started the game with 90 catches. Pow pow! Touchdown to Derek Zeno! But there is a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage. Roughing the passer charged against Toronto. So the touchdown will stand. Well, you know, Joe Pawpaw did about as good a job that time. He had excellent protection initially, as we'll see right here. He drops back and the protection is there for him. But then all of a sudden there's some penetration by Seal. He steps up inside, uses his eyes looking downfield, throws the ball up in the air, and Zeno makes just an outstanding catch for the touchdown. I think Zeno has to get some consideration for that offensive star. I mean, he's returned a punt and made some great catches. That was a good catch there also. I think we were saying that uh, several weeks ago while he was over in Ottawa that he was getting some consideration when he was playing for them. And the point after by David Ridgway gives the Saskatchewan Rough Riders a 26-7 lead. For you, there's only one way to paint because you really care about what you do. So for you, we make only one quality of paint, our best. Pittsburgh paints. It always goes on smoothly, covers beautifully, and stays beautiful for years and years. It's the paint that makes painting worth the effort. Pittsburgh paints. Pittsburgh paint products are now available at both Prudhomme stores in Edmonton and Sherwood Park. Everyone has special dreams, and Transamerica Life wants to know about them. What's your dream, Angela Martin? Oh. For both my children to go to university. Good for you. I would like one day to open my own sportswear boutique. I'd also like to finally be financially secure. You know, to be able to relax and enjoy. Very nice dreams. And Transamerica Life's assured life policy can help them come true. Go for the dream with Transamerica Life. Can help them come true. Go 
Sports Weekend, Saturday, November 23rd, the Grey Cup Parade, live from Montreal. Then a look back to last year's game in search of a dream. And finally, a special report from Toronto's Royal Winter Fair. It's all coming to you from Sports Weekend. Derek Zeno is the man who grabbed that throw from Joe Pow-Pow for the touchdown, the short kickoff attempt. The ball is loose, and it is knocked out of bounds by Mike Hudson, or Warren Hudson. Well, we're going to take a look at the touchdown play. And Popow, as we said, Mark Steele gets a little penetration and allows him to step up in the pocket. And the pattern he has called Elgard's coming across the middle. He's not open, and right behind him is Zeno, who makes a good move to come underneath the defender, and then goes up and gets the football. That's about all you can ask. Well, while we're at it, before we forget about it, we've got to wish Donnie Matthews the best out there in uh, BC, too. His team finished in first place, and we are already have uh, congratulated Al Bruno on the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Yes, indeed. The British Columbia Lions coming through with... Two victories over the Edmonton Eskimos a week ago and the Ottawa Rough Riders on Friday night to finish atop the Western Conference standings. Who's got a better win-loss record in Canadian football for a lot of years than Donnie Matthews? Gary Durchick. <laughs> Gary Durchick, two for two, you're right. Gary would like to make that about four for four. From the 32-yard line, all the way, won't get a chance to throw. Rick Moore was there again, and Rick Moore has had an outstanding ball game defensively. You don't think he'd want to have a great game against Toronto, would he? Just something about playing against your old team, you always get a little bit more fired up, but he has been very aggressive up on that front line today. That's not a good sign there. All the way favoring, it would appear, that left knee once again. Well, I think we've seen the last of Holloway this afternoon. If he got that bad knee bumps. Ricky Turner over there. there. So Ricky Turner is going to be forced into the lineup. Perhaps a little sooner than he anticipated. Well, let's see if we can see it, Leo, just what did happen. He got a good rush both inside and outside. You see Moore just, just throws Inglis away. Ooh, rolled into that knee. Holloway hasn't moved at all. It looks like he's in a, a lot of pain, but, uh, you know, for any family or friends that are watching, it's, it's his knee. It's not a head injury or anything like that. It, although that's very serious for a professional of his ability, it certainly uh, is less alarming than if he would have had a hit in the head or something. You see the roll on the ground right here. What's the left knee give to the inside? And then Rick Moore's there to finish it off. And, you know, those knees take an awful long time to heal. Well, it took Holloway a long time to get back into right. the Argo lineup. It was initially anticipated after he suffered the injury that he would return to the roster for a September game, a late September game, against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But it kept becoming a weak by week situation and as the days sped by and Holloway did not return the Argo playoffs hopes also just diminished and of course uh, they had the final nail put in the coffin last week with that 17-3 loss to the Montreal Concords. You know a lot of times Don during the year when they kept talking about when Conridge comes back and Conridge comes back it's a tough thing to get the rest of the guys to play for a rookie quarterback who really doesn't have the experience and I think that was a good example this season the Toronto Argonauts just saw that season slip away as Leo said Lissick's third down kick is taken by Derek Zeno Zeno still looking for that opening there's a penalty flag as he is stopped at the 50 yard line back at the Saskatchewan 50-yard line, and I think Carm Kateri is going to be fingered for an illegal block. A 31-yard kick that time by Hank Elisic. The ball comes back to the 44. 
illegal block. Saskatchewan number 72 on the run back. First down. Twelve twenty-eight is the time remaining in this third quarter. 26-7. Saskatchewan leads. First and 10 for the Rough Riders from the 44-yard line. Popow, it appeared, had some difficulty with the exchange from center. And Frank Robinson was coming from his outside linebacking position to make sure that the Saskatchewan quarterback did not get a chance to throw. I think it's David Conrad, number 37, didn't look outside. Boy, Frank Robinson, with his speed, got in there, and, and the look on Conrad's face when he went down, he just, you knew it was his man that got in there. This is the second game that Frank Robinson has played for the Toronto Argonauts since being claimed when he was placed on waivers by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, of course, Robinson previously played in the CFL with Saskatchewan. Pow Pow throwing deep, incomplete. Pass was intended for Tony Dennis way down at the 15-yard line. I think they have to be impressed with the play of Tony Dennis today. He's shown he can go deep, shown he'll hang on to the ball in traffic, and he'll make the catches when it's when the opportunity's there. I mean, he was a long way downfield, and he made a good effort for the ball. He goes up, but when you have two, when you're out number two to one, you really shouldn't catch it. Papa put that ball 60 yards in the air looking for his rookie slot back, Tony Dennis. McGrath stands at his own 25-yard line for this third down punt. Good kick. Garinci waits for it at the 20. Garinci on the return. Gets an opening up to the 46-yard line. Stopped by David Singh. With 11.04 remaining in the third quarter, and Ricky Turner will be taking over at quarterback. For seven years, Corporation, with CP Rail, they've never forgotten my name, and I think it's the finest company in Canada to work for. CP Rail. CP Rail, helping Canada move forward. The CFL on CBC next week at 1 Eastern in the Eastern Final. Two weeks from today, we will have the Western Final from Vancouver. Well, Ricky Turner has not seen that much action, nor has he had that much success this year in the Canadian Football League, but the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will vividly recall one game he enjoyed as a quarterback for the Toronto Argonauts. That was when the Argos scored a big upset over the Blue Bombers. And he throws complete to Jeff Townsend, but there's a penalty flag. Back at the 27-yard line. Number 45, Billy Jackson, took a swipe at him across the head. One of the offensive linemen didn't, didn't like it too much. They more or less told him, but the referee caught him. We understand that Conrad Holloway is finished for the afternoon. Knee injury he suffered earlier in this third quarter. Major foul, roughing the passer, Saskatchewan number 45. First down. Oh, we said before, Don, that Ricky Turner has a lot of the mannerisms that Conrad Holloway has. He certainly doesn't have his experience, but another game that he came in and did a real good job was that Vancouver game earlier in the season, that BC Lion game. With the penalty tacked on, the first down is at the 30, the 26 yard line, and Walter Bender, the ball carrier, is stopped by Gary Lewis. 26-7, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders lead the Toronto Argonauts, and this is the final regular season game in the CFL for 1985. Semi-final play begins next Sunday. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers will entertain Edmonton, and the Montreal Concords will host the Ottawa Rough Riders. We'll have that game for you from Olympic Stadium on the CBC Television Network. Just remember, this kid can run, too, if he gets caught. He's going to run this time, it would appear, but there's a penalty flag back at the line of scrimmage, so it may be going for naught. That usually indicates holding. And referee Bud Ulrich is asking for the ball to be brought back to the line of scrimmage at the 26. Well, that was unfortunate for the Argos because he did have Holy. a first down. Toronto number 56, 
Second down repeater. Ian Beckstead, the center, who was signed as a free agent in 1983, was the guilty party. Rick Moore after Turner. He got the pass away, completing the throw to Danny Barrett. He fumbles the ball. And Saskatchewan's Dave Singh has recovered. There's a man on the sideline saying, what do we have to do? And the guy on the other side of the field, Jack Goda, is probably saying, where has this been all year? Saying, well, about time we got a break. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's Turner. You're going to see Rick Moore, 76, come from the back, and it almost looked like he was going to sack him. And just as he lets it go, he makes the hit on him. And Barrett makes the catch. Now, let's see what happens to the ball. Billy Jackson's after him. He strips it. Ball's loose. Dave Singh is there. He slapped Defensive it right out of back. Line. UBC. Len Suter and Dave Singh both scrambling for the football. And the UBC product, Dave Singh, managed to come up with it. Pow Pow on first down completes the pass to Craig Ellis. He goes out of bounds at the nine-yard line. That will be a gain of four. Make it second and six. 9.15 is the time remaining. Alice this afternoon within one touchdown of equaling the Saskatchewan team record for most touchdowns in a single season. And he needs two more touchdowns to break the single season rushing record for touchdowns. That is held by George Reed. Pass is complete over the middle for a first down. And they are throwing that ball to Tony Dennis this afternoon, and the rookie is responding. So that's what I mean, just in the traffic that time. Split the linebackers, got in the hole, the ball's delivered a little high, and he pulls it down. And, you know, when you're evaluating people and it's an opportunity to play, you know, Tony Dennis realizes there's a lot on the line for him. He wants to be a starter. Well, Tony Dennis was the Riders' fourth-round pick in the 1985 draft. His first two receptions this year were against the British Columbia Lions. They uh, run that counterplay with the spot back, Ray Elgard, for a gain of about four yards. Gary Doolin was there to make the tackle. This drive for Saskatchewan, following the fumble recovery by Singh, started at the five-yard line. Joe Pow Pow would like to keep it going all the way to the Toronto goal line. That quick pass to Dennis before around was vintage Pow Pow, too. Remember early in the season? He just dropped back two steps, and boy, he was driving people crazy with those short passes. Well, the cold weather and the Rough Riders' lack of success this year has contributed to the small crowd. Craig Ellis taking that throw over the middle out to the 37-yard line, stopped there by Frank Robinson. Well, there's nothing complicated about it. They want to blitz inside, so you just take your receivers and bring them in to the area that they vacate and watch where the ball's caught, right where that linebacker was standing. There goes Ellis. Turn to the inside, look quick. That linebacker disappears, you look for the ball. Joe Popow early in the season had a lot of patience with that kind of offense, too. He was taking it up and down the field, amassing 300, 400 yards, passing the ball through the air, and then... Right after he came back, it seemed like he had lost some of his patience come back from that injury, and he was starting to throw the ball deep. I remember one of the games that he came back, we couldn't understand why he was unloading it so deep. But well, while he sticks with the, his game plan and has his patience on those short passes, he is very, very difficult to defend. Craig Ellis now with 96 receptions for the season. The injured Toronto player, Cliff Hewitt, has gone to the bench. Jerry Nash, a product of the University of Alberta, is his replacement. Craig Ellis makes his seventh catch of the afternoon. He is stopped at the 43, again by linebacker Frank Robinson. This time, Don, what they do, now the linebackers are up in the line, showing like they're going to blitz, but watch them drop out of here. So now when Ellis comes out of, out of the backfield, he'll just catch the ball in a hole. They just look for an open area. See, the linebackers fake the blitz, drop back. Now Ellis starts to go in where they are. Now he sees them, so he back out of there. Get to an open area, pop out, find him. And as, as you say, Leo, that's what he did early in the season. But you know, when you're out of the lineup for six weeks, it's hard to keep your chain, chain, uh, chain of thought right. He's got it going again now. 
looked like somebody was offside there. Craig Gallus made the catch. He may have fumbled the football, but got it back, and there's also a penalty flag. The right side of the uh, Saskatchewan offense, two, two receivers were offside. Way offside, too. Not, not close. No, no, no. He just no. said up call. It's all over. Yeah. Have a little discussion on how they want to block the offensive line. Get together over there and must be having problems with that Saskatchewan defense. And you have to get the drawing board out during the game. You know you're having some problems. Offside, Saskatchewan number 33, second down repeated. Twenty-three twenty was the score in the other CFL game today. The Montreal Concords defeating the Edmonton Eskimos to grab second place in the Eastern Conference and the right to host next Sunday's semifinal. Montreal entertaining the Ottawa Rough Riders. We'll have that game for you on CBC Television. Craig Ellis again, and they took the previous catch away from him, and now a skirmish develops. David Marshall tackled Craig Ellis, but there are some feelings that perhaps there was a block thrown after the catch was made by the center, Willie Thomas. Well, Leo alluded to this early. This is something you hate to see, but it happens a lot of times in these kind of games. You start fighting. Keep your helmets on if you're going to fight. <laughs> Don't take them off. Especially in the last game. Unless you can get somebody else's. <laughs> However, Craig Ellis was stopped short of a first down, and it forces the Rough Riders into a kicking situation from the 45. Carinci takes it at his own 20-yard line. And Carinci, who had a 25-yard return earlier in this quarter, runs it back to the 37 before being stopped by David Conrad, a return of 17. We'll be back right after this. Ever since man invented machines to move people, it uses the airflow to improve handling. And inside, there's ample space for up to seven people. Ford welcomes you to the age of Aerostar. Aerostar! Ford Aerostar. Blue Nose Heritage. It belongs to every Canadian. Petro-Canada is proud to sponsor the restoration and maintenance of Blue Nose 2. For with no past to give our children, there can be no future. Petro-Canada. Our energy is Canada. Next Saturday on Sports Weekend, from Australia, the Melbourne Cup, and from Toronto, the Royal Winter Fair. It all starts at 3 Eastern. Trailing by 19, the Toronto Argonauts will take over at their 37-yard line. Word from the Toronto bench is that Cliff Hewitt injured an ankle and will not be returning. So that means that the rookie Jerry Nash will be going the rest of the ball game at that safety position. And Ricky Turner is the quarterback. Following the injury to Conrad Holloway, he completes the pass to Danny Barrett for a Toronto first down out to the 53-yard line. Jitterfields came over to make the tackle. Where in the world do you get a name like Jitterfields? I heard about him. Let me tell you where he got it. Where? His mother gave him that name when he was just a very youngster, a little guy, and it just kind of stuck. Well, I mean, I is, it a, is it his real name? Jitter? No, Alfred is his real name. Oh. But he's gone by Jitter since he was a kid. I've heard of Jitter Bugs and free game Jitters, but I've never heard of Jitter Fields. Pass is complete to Jeff Townsend. There's a penalty flag on the play as Townsend got to the 35 of Saskatchewan. Procedure against Toronto will wipe out the game. I think one of the Toronto receivers may have moved too quickly and crossed the line of scrimmage prior to the ball being snapped. Procedure, Toronto number 51, first time repeated. Well, Jeff Inglis isn't a receiver. No, <laughs> that didn't surprise me. He must have moved. I didn't see him. I was watching the receivers. I thought it was a receiver, too. First and 15 now for Toronto. They are back at the 48-yard line. 
421 is the time remaining in the third quarter. 26-7. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders are in front. Turner was looking for Stanley Washington. And Jimmy Hunter, the linebacker, was back defending against him. And they have been doing some of that defending just a little illegally. <laughs> Could have. They had a blitz on him that time. That's why you saw that back bump move across to try to pick up the linebacker on this side to give him some time. Been watch, just going to watch Ricky Turner for a while. The games we saw him, he, he had a little bit of trouble in, but today he stood in there pretty well. This is what he needs, Leo experience. Penalty flags on the play. I think if we get a chance to see that again, Rick Moore, the left offensive tackle, Prunster, moved, and Rick Moore just stepped across and touched him. Which means that uh, you moved. I'm going to make it legal for the penalty. Bud Ulrich and his staff sorting this one out. There were three flags on the play. See the guy on the left side move his foot. He moved that back foot. You can't do that. That's purposely drawing him offside. Rick Moore said, okay, you moved. I'm stepping across, making contact with you. That means five yards against you. And don't tell me they're going to go the other way. No, it's five yards against the Argos. Procedure for runner number 66. Second down to Peter. Yes. Don't argue it. Just go play football. I don't, I don't he called number 56, I think. Number 56 is Ian Beckstead, the center. It was number 66, Kevin Prunster. Regardless of who it was, the Argos are now looking at second and 20. Saskatchewan with a sixth defensive back in. Junior Robinson into the ball game. Long throw. Junior Robinson picks it up. Ball is fumbled. And there's another penalty flag. And who has done it? I think Coach Obilovich is pretty resigned to the fact that... Uh, Let's start thinking about training camp next year. Again, we wait for referee Bud Ulrich to sort this one out for us. It's been a very frustrating season for Bob Obilovich and his Toronto Argonauts. Ilio Block, Saskatchewan, After the pass. first down. And the illegal block by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders occurred after the interception. So the interception stands. It's a first down for the green and white. They are at the 54-yard line. 324 is the time remaining in the third quarter. Bill Popow started the ball game. He's gone all the way, completing the pass to Craig Ellis. And Ellis gets to the 54-yard line of Toronto. That will be a gain of only two yards. He is stopped by Darrell Wilson. Three hundred and fifty-six net yards for Saskatchewan to one forty-one for Toronto. Just nine yards rushing for Toronto. I like to point that out to people who think that the rushing is a big part of the Canadian Football League game. Nine yards for Toronto and eighty for Saskatchewan. He's not going to give up on that. Bob Bob can't find a receiver, loses the football, and David Marshall has got it. Well, this has been a series of errors here in this third quarter. Joe Papa didn't feel the guy behind him, didn't know that he was there, and as so often happens, when he's in a position to throw, as he is right here with the guy behind him, the ball gets knocked loose. And number 73, David Marshall, who hasn't been that long in Canadian football, got up and ran with the football, but apparently they blew it dead, but he had every right to get up and run with it. Gary Doolin was the man who came from behind and caught Pow Pow, and Marshall was there to grab the loose ball with 2.27 remaining in the third quarter. 
Ricky Turner parks out the signals. First and 10, Toronto. He's trying to fire that flanker screen to Jeff Townsend. It's incomplete. I was fortunate that went out of bounds because it looked like a lateral to me, and if there was a green shirt over there, I think they could have uh, recovered that football. They've announced the official attendance this afternoon at 19,212. The Rough Riders have a season ticket base of about 18,000. I'd question that as far as straight attendance goes, but they have about that many season tickets number of fans actually in the stands as compared to the number of tickets. There is Terry Greer wide open for the touchdown and he could have walked into the end zone. He was a good 10 yards in behind Eddie Ray Walker and he was looking back to make sure there were no penalty flags and then he strolled to the end zone. Well you watch Ricky Turner now. Greer ran that hook pattern and he was covered. Eddie Ray Walker came right up on him and then when Turner looked away Walker relax, and you don't relax with a receiver like Greer. He just waltzed around him, and that's awfully easy for him. Terry Greer can't believe it. He thinks that there must have been holding or something back there. He can't believe that it was so easy. Well, Greer was looking back to see if there was any red nylon on the artificial turf here at Taylor Field. Fortunately for the Argos, there was not, so the 53-yard touchdown makes it a 29-13 football game, and with the point after by Lance Chomick, make it 26 14, not 29. All oh, right, let's see what he does. Now, he runs the hook, oh. takes a look and goes. Look at Eddie Ray Walker. You see him looking in the backfield to see when the ball's coming. Terry Greer just slips by him. Really you got young guys out there are defensive backs. When that guy stops, you don't stop in front of him. You keep a little cushion on him. And when that ball is thrown, then go to the football. But don't go beyond him because he just stopped, turned it upfield, and he was beaten by 10 yards. And one of the things you have to notice as a defensive back as you're talking, he didn't turn completely around like it was a hook pattern. He just stopped, and Eddie Ray Walker bit. And boy, when you do that, a guy with that speed makes it awful easy. Will Terry Greer be back in the Canadian Football League next season? 6'2", 180-pound product of Alabama State is playing out his option this year, and there is considerable speculation that he will attempt to gain employment in the National Football League in 1986. Coincidentally, he's property of the Los Angeles Rams, and if he did go down there, his uh, battery mate would be another guy that uh, has gone down there by the name of Dieter Brock. Rear signed as a free agent with the Toronto Argonauts back in 1980. He really likes Toronto. I think he'd like to stay in Toronto. It's just a matter of uh, opportunities, and I know he's going to probably be offered a lot of money to get out of the National Football League. No chance for Derek Zeno on the return as Carl Braisley got downfield very quickly after that short kickoff by Hank Elisic of 33 yards, making the tackle right at the 30-yard line. Yeah, when that ball gets up high like that, when you see that ball turning real fast in the air, you know he didn't hit it real good, but when he gets up into that wind, it just settles, and boy, Brasley did what he should do, go to that football, because it is free. If he can run down there and catch it, it's his. And you want to take a look out there, Ron, in, in terms of field position, in terms of score, the Argonauts have been asleep all afternoon, but they, they're not that far out. If they could get a break right here, they'd be right back in this ball game. Pop out of Craig Ellis, and Craig Ellis now has 100 receptions for the season. Carl Braisley took Ellis out of bounds, and they will spot the ball about a yard shy of a first down. Craig Ellis with his 10th catch of the afternoon. Well, are they going to quarterback sneak it, or are they going to give it to Ellis and let him go over the top? They're going to run that play they've been running, one side or the other. They're going to pick a side. Wow, oh, good move. Wrong again. I just figured that with that, they had some success. Ellis might break another one. Pow Pow keeps for the first down, and it will be first and 10, Saskatchewan, from the 43-yard line. The Rough Riders' single-season reception record, 102, set by Joey Walters in 1982. Well, because they have had a little bit of success running the football this afternoon, Joe Pawpaw has been throwing some play-action passes on first down and getting him out there to Craig Ellis, and that's keeping that ball moving. Statistically, Saskatchewan has a big edge, but the Rough Riders lead by just 12. 
David Conrad. First out to the 49. He was stopped there by David Marshall. Saskatchewan initially planned on starting the game with two Canadians in the running back positions, Denny Ferdinand and David Conrad. And at times they have had that pair out there, but they have also move people around and Craig Gallus has gone from spot back to a running back position. Yeah, they're moving a lot of people around and it's good to see Conrad get the play. Pass is complete over the middle to Craig Gallus for a first down. Stopped by the safety, Jerry Nash. Well, once again, just Ellis exactly. just, just does it. He, those two inside linebackers go on the blitz. He just runs where they leave. Pow Pow, having the experience, dumps it in there. And they can throw it all day. Watch it. Here come the backers. There goes Ellis. <laughs> Pitch and catch. And this should be the final play of this third quarter. Bootleg for the first time this afternoon. Craig Ellis again. He got away from two. But three more came over to make the tackle. But Craig Ellis still manages to pick up a couple of yards and with that reception equals a Saskatchewan club record. That's the end of the third quarter. In Football League, Terry Greer holds the record 113 in 1983. Ryan Kelly in 1983 for the Edmonton Eskimos caught 104. So with 15 minutes still remaining and Pow Pow throwing that ball frequently to Craig Ellis through the first 45 minutes, he might move into second place in the all-time list ahead of Brian Kelly. Well, he's got a good shot at it and the way that the Argonauts are playing defense, Ellis is going to find that hole for you when they blitz those backers, so it wouldn't surprise me. Down the sidelines for Henderson. It's incomplete. Twenty six fourteen is the score here at Taylor Field the Rough Riders following a fumble recovery got a touchdown from Derek Zeno 102 into the third quarter and then a 53 yard pass from Ricky Turner to Terry Greer late in the quarter has moved the Argos within 12. McGrath under that pressure doesn't get a chance to throw or to kick the ball he tried to throw and it was knocked down. And the Toronto Argonauts will take over in pretty good field position. Well, that's that break that they're waiting for. And with the score, just 26 to 14, uh, they can turn things around right here if they just get, get a mark. To, uh, they sure can. They, on that particular play, Frank Robinson, number 70, nobody ever hit him to take that momentum of his charge away. And he came through there, and he's the one that McGrath saw, and that's the reason he pulled the ball down. You've got to take that charge out of them before you leave. And as you say, Leo, they can win this football game. Well, they the Argos also have the uh, advantage of that favoring win for this final quarter. Turner's pass intended for Bender was high. It will be second and ten. Do that just a little bit early. He had Stan Washington coming open, who I would think on that kind of pattern would be his primary receiver, but... He didn't wait for him. Well, a big edge for Saskatchewan statistically, 379 yards to 194. And there have been a lot of turnovers in the ball game. The Rough Riders four and the Argos three. Terry Greer was the intended target of quarterback Ricky Turner. Turner misses the mark, and that brings Hank Kalisic into the ball game to kick with the wind of his back. Well, I think he thought that he had Stan Washington wide open on that one, and he should have thrown the ball to him coming across the middle. What they try to do is they want him underneath, and then they break him across and him across. That's what they try to do. And as you say, he didn't wait on Stan Washington because he did come wide open across the middle. Oh. Alessic's third down kick will sail into the end zone and will roll right through for an Argo point. And that comes with 13-31 remaining in the ballgame. It is now 26-15, Saskatchewan leading Toronto. By being efficient, we can reduce our costs to shippers, to our customers. They don't have to 
bear the higher cost of an inefficient organization. I work the CP railway line. It is the customer that is the critical element. If our customer has a good, solid future, so do we. We aren't happy with just being good. We would like to be the best. CP Rail. CP Rail. Helping Canada move forward. The Grey Cup, Canadian football supremacy. Nine CFL teams strive for a goal only one can achieve. The road to Grey Cup is challenging. Exceptional individual skills expressed in an arena of team effort. Montreal hosts Grey Cup 85. A week of festivities set the stage for the ultimate confrontation in Canadian sport. For information on Grey Cup in Montreal, dial this hotline 1-416-928-3535. It will be first and ten for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders from the 35-yard line. Next Sunday afternoon, we'll have the Eastern semifinal. The Montreal Concords entertaining the Ottawa Rough Riders from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. The ball is fumbled by Pow on the exchange from center. He was fortunate to get it back and dive forward for a gain of a couple of yards. It's interesting, as I mentioned earlier in the telecast, that the two teams that finished third in both the Eastern and Western Conferences this year won both games against the teams that finished in second place. The team that finished second will, of course, have home field advantage for the semifinal. Montreal entertaining Ottawa. Winnipeg hosting Edmonton. How do you keep track of all that stuff? Well, Leo, when you follow football as closely as I do. <laughs> <laughs> That should have been fine. You should have been a statistician. Second and eight. Alpha dumped it over the middle, and it will be ruled an incomplete pass intended for Ferdinand. Powell was hit. He felt that shot, and Ferdinand was also a little slow in getting to his feet. Pow Pow's a little slow, too. Let's see if we get the hit on him. This is one of those ones where that back says, I sure wish you had thrown to me late. Uh, no wonder he got a little slow. The reaction of Pow Pow as Curry rolled into him, and Pow Pow in pain as he went down. James Curry, a much-traveled performer in the Canadian Football League. Winnipeg, British Columbia, Toronto, Montreal. One thing you can say about Pow Pow is when he looks like he's hurt, he's hurt because he's a tough guy. Well, you're going to see it. 74 coming in from the outside, going in low. Traps that leg underneath Ooh, him. That's like 260 that pounds going down on it. That's tough. It's like he rolled on it. Harold Smith. Fans have been calling for Harold Smith in the second half. I guess they're going to get the chance to see him. Boy, Joe Popov is tough to run. We've seen him over the years play with bad ribs, bad shoulders, bad hands, and everything else, and he just hangs in there and plays. And he's like the old saying goes, look up tough in the dictionary and you see his picture. Well, we talked at the start of our telecast about how difficult the season has been for both the Argos and the Rough Riders without their number one quarterbacks. They were both injured early in the year. It's somewhat ironic, I suppose, that uh, both should be injured in this final game of the season. Well, they're putting some pressure on that punter. Jan Carinci takes McGrath's kick, and he fights his way out to the 52-yard line. He's stopped there by Eddie Lowe. Pow Pow favoring his right knee. Conrad Holloway earlier went out of the ball game, favoring his left knee. 30-yard kick that time by Jerry McGrath, a return of nine yards by Jan Karinci. Boy, you hate to have a look at those knees. First and 10 Toronto, the ball is at the 52, 12-13, left to play. 26-15 is the score, Saskatchewan leading. The pitch to Jeff Townsend as he tries to get to the outside and is forced out of bounds directly in front of that Argo bench. 
Billy Jackson, the linebacker, and Dave Singh came over to force Townsend out of bounds after a gain of six yards. Incomplete. Don't get mad. You should have caught the football. The ball was there. Catch it. The quarterback converted to slot back. Now we're going to see a little pressure the other way. And guess who? Number 76 more. He's been a, all over those Argonauts today. He has caused problems for first. Conrad Holloway and now Ricky Turner with 11.37 left to play. 26-15 is the score in favor of Saskatchewan. Ankalisic stands at his own 42-yard line. If he gets this ball up in the air, too much time, but if he gets this ball up in the air, it's doubtful he can, he'll do it this time, but from there, if he would have gotten it up in the air and it was close to the goal line, they'd be well advised to take a point and try to get field position. And here they may be able to. Toronto, third down repeated. They may be able to establish some kind of a return from this distance. He may still give up the point because he can. If he hits it with that win, he'll still get it deep. And those flags are really blowing over there on top of the scoreboard. And Alisic is going to put this one into the end zone. Can you believe that kick? A single point by Hank Alisic, a kick of 83 yards. 26-16 now. That's how he used to kick. Well, at times this year, Alisic has had some problems. At one point in his career, Alisic was both the place kicker and the punter for the Toronto Argonauts. Harold Smith comes into the ball game, a product of Texas Southern University. He's got some size, 6'2", 210 pounds. He's got a fan club out here, too. He got quite an ovation going out on the field. He throws deep down the sidelines intended for Henderson. It will be second and 10. It's always amazing how the fans react to the new kid in town. Well, we've talked about that numerous times this year, and I know this. He might he came off the bench against the BC Lions and did a good job for him late in the football game, but there's no way Jack Goda or any other coach wants to start the season with a rookie quarterback. And uh, it's been proven very much so in the 1985 season. Without those veterans in there, you're in trouble at that spot. It will be second and ten. Ball is at the 35-yard line. That snap, the ball sails all the way back to the five-yard line, picked up by the Argos. Touchdown, Frank Robinson carried it into the end zone. It almost looked like a direct snap that went through there so fast. Boy, Jack Goda, he just can't believe the chain of events. He says, here we are here leading 26 to 7 or something in the third quarter, and I look up at the scoreboard right now, and it's... Uh, 26 to 23 before I know it. This is going to be interesting. I want to see this. That ball really took off. I thought Ferdinand had it. Then he lost it. So Frank Robinson is the opportunist to grab that loose ball in the end zone for a Toronto Argonaut touchdown. And that comes with 10-29 remaining. Lance Jomick will attempt the point after. They're going to go for two. Jan Carinci trying to run it in. He is stopped. He pitched the ball out, but play is whistled dead, and the score holds. Boy, that was an outstanding job done by number 42, Eddie Lowe, to make that open field tackle on Jan Carinci. We'll be back in a moment. You fought for every yard. Now there's only one. Black and Decker. 
We're going to get another look at that exchange. It almost looked like a direct snap. It just got completely away from Pow Pow, and Denny Ferdinand had the opportunity to pick it up, but it got away from him. And look at Frank Robinson grab the ball and crawl into the end zone. And right now, the Argonauts down with a wind at their back and uh, kicking a the Saskatchewan team down into a hole. have got an excellent chance in this football game. Derek Zeno on the kickoff return, and there's a penalty flag on the play. They're going to get Ray Elgard for an illegal block. But let's go back to the two-point conversion. I think that's a great call. You trail them by four. You have the opportunity to move to within two and kick a field goal and win the goal. football game. Yep. The only thing I would question is the execution. Jan had a guy there to pitch to. It was a, a nice play. He had the pitch man with him on an option. He thought he could make it himself. Well, Jack Dutta, at one point in this ball game, appeared to... Have a victory all right. Eagle up. block. Saskatchewan number 81. First down. Good call, Ron. You'll see. You'll see him, Elgard coming into the picture right there. See him pushing Hewitt. Got his hand in his back and just pushing him. That is definitely a no-no. Denny Ferdinand gets only two yards before being stopped by Mark Seal. Well, I know how Jack Rota must feel about now. He's not only down in the shadow of his goal line, as we see Joe Pompao sitting on the sideline there, looking very dejected with the ice pack on his knee. And not only is he in the shadow of his goal line there, but he's got a rookie quarterback in there to try to get him out. That's the scary part. To me, that is it. You know, you have your veteran quarterback, and they haven't been. The only time they were down there, Pow Pow moved them out from the shadow of the goalpost. Now you have the rookie quarterback in there, and that's tough. We have unnecessary roughness against Saskatchewan, and unnecessary roughness against Toronto. Families cancel it, chill out. Plus the fact they're going against a very brisk win. This has been a problem a number of times this season for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They have collapsed in the fourth quarter in the late stages of a couple of ball games. No, no. Carl Braisley was trying for the interception. That he stepped in front of Tracy Henderson, and he is upset with himself. Yes. Braisley was playing a zone defense, and he just watched him up to about 12 yards and turn around and looks at the quarterback, and he'll just step underneath and get that nine times out of ten. We're going to see it right here. Actually, Brazley had an excellent chance there for the interception, but right down here in this position, kicking against the wind out of your end zone, would you consider taking two points here, even with a field goal being able to beat you? Uh, no, because I don't think they could kick it off too much farther. I think that they're going to have to count on their defense to come up big. Short kick by McGrath. Penalty flag on the play. Good move by Jan Carinci. He knew that he had... A Saskatchewan player trapped within that five-yard area, and he grabbed the ball, and that will improve the Toronto Argonauts' field position even more. Now what do you think? <laughs> well, now let me reevaluate the situation. <laughs> They're in a position here to get at least three in a hurry. They got three right now. 9.28 is the time left to play. 26-22 is the score. Bud Ulrich marches off the yardage against Saskatchewan, taking the ball to the... 19 and a half. Boy, Jack Goda. Here we goes. are. Saskatchewan number 45 on the run back. First down. Jack Goda must just be standing on those sidelines cringing right about now with the big lead that he had coming into the third quarter. Into the fourth quarter. Uh -oh, Turner firing the pass complete to Walter Bender. Touchdown. Boy, that's a great call at that stage. You know, you, you figure you got the young quarterback in there. Saskatchewan's going to come after him. And he hits him with a screen pass, and it was just, that was a piece of cake. Boy, you want to talk about a well-executed play and a play that really looked good in print. This looks like the way a screen pass should look. He drops back, sets up, looks over to the screen man, just keeps giving ground there and allowing that rush to come in and intimidate the rush. And there's Ferone out there, number 69. Doesn't have to block anybody. Hurdles into the end zone, and we've got a, a new leader in the ball game. Lance Chomick with the point after. He puts it through. 
And the Toronto Argonauts move into a 29-26 lead. 9-16 remains, and we'll be back with the Argo kickoff after this. How do you remember to play Lotto 649? I have a friend who reminds me. <laughs> Boy, thank you, Elmer. Darling, it's Mother. Did you flaw? Don't forget dinner Sunday. Did you play 649 Wednesday? Never mind, you can still make Saturday's draw. I have a really bad memory. <laughs> 649! Good bird! Lotto 649! Got my ticket, Hank. Thanks for the reminder. How do you remember to play Lotto 649? Be with us after the game as Don Whitman, Ron Lancaster, and Leo Cahill select the Carling O'Keefe Game Stars. Next Sunday at 1 o'clock from Olympic Stadium in Montreal, we'll have the Eastern semifinal for you on CBC Television. The Concords entertaining the Ottawa Rough Riders. The Western semifinal features the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Edmonton Eskimos at Winnipeg Stadium. That game also takes place on Sunday afternoon. Kent State product Walter Bender scoring this touchdown. Boy, watch that screen. He just lobbed it out there to Bender. And look at that open field. And Bender almost slowed down on the thing. Didn't see in the defensive back coming. And then luckily flipped over the top of him for the score. But he slowed down a little bit there. Well, uh, Kent State, a few years back, produced an outstanding player for the Toronto Argonauts in Jim Corrigal. Walter Bender, also out of Kent State. Derek Zeno had to retreat into his goal area for the kickoff return. And he was stopped as he got out to the 13-yard line after that 68-yard kickoff by Hank Elisic. Well, the report from the Toronto Argonaut bench is that Lance Chomick, who handles the place-kicking chores for the Argos, has pulled a groin. So in the event that they need a field goal attempt, I guess the task will fall to Hank Elisic. Harold Smith, the rookie quarterback, following the injury to Joe Papa. Now directing the Saskatchewan attack. Will he get a chance to throw? No, he is dropped by Frank Robinson. Boy, Frank Robinson came up behind him, Ron, and I think if he would have reached under, he could have knocked the ball out of his hands. He just snuck in there. What? what this is the same defense as before, and it looks like he's going to cover man, but he's going to settle right here, and he's going to go deep, and he is looking for the wide receiver, but he's not going to get open. What? Brakely sees him. Now he lets him go. Now he'll just stop right there. Now you got nowhere to throw the football, and Frank Robinson, as you say, snuck up behind him, and down he goes. I'll tell you, you can fool rookie quarterbacks. You fool young quarterbacks, and that's what they're doing to him. Second and 14. Again, Harold Smith having trouble finding a receiver. Finally gets it away to Conrad. And Conrad is going to be stopped two yards short of a first down. At least two yards short, maybe three. I'll give Smith credit that time. He hung in there and waited and waited and waited. I thought for sure he was going to be sacked. Look how much time he's got. He's got the time. Look at who hit him. Moving around, moving around. Number 76 will be on the other side of the line. Number 76, though. That's his compliment. Mark Seal. Now, you're going to gamble here, Leo, with one yard? Less than a yard. you got to gamble. Well, they spotted that ball at the point of his forward advance, and that was between the 22 and the 23 so it is third and about a yard and Smith will keep and he should have it. Initially on that last pass when Conrad made the catch I thought he was maybe two or three yards away. But the third down gamble pays off for Jack Dada and his Saskatchewan Rough Riders with 7.30 remaining in the ball game. Conrad picks up five out to the 30-yard line. David Marshall made the tackle with help from Don Moan. 
That's not a bad play. You know, they're going against a strong wind. They're not down that far. Just take your time. Make sure you make first downs. Keep the drive going. They run on first down and you got a little over five yards. Well, they've certainly got a lot of time to work with. 647 shows on the scoreboard clock. Derek Zeno goes wide to the left. Elgard in motion from that spot back position. And the pass is complete to Tracy Henderson, who came back when he saw that the quarterback was in trouble, and he provides the Rough Riders with an important first down. You want to talk about coming back. Smith is the guy that came back. He came back to the dead on that one because he was cornered by two defenders back there, and at the last moment, let it go, and that was a key first down, Ron. We'll see him Do you see here. that replay, Leo? Joe Powell Powell in the ball game, he'll dump the Ellis right over the middle with that linebacker blitz. But as we've said before, young quarterbacks don't see that effect. See that linebacker blitz in 73. Ellis comes right into that hole again. Smith's very fortunate, but it's a good play. Gain of 16. He's throwing deep for Elgar. Incomplete. He and his play was defending against Ray Elgar. He doesn't stumble. He's got that. You know what happened? He made the mistake that a rookie receiver shouldn't make at the last moment. He overextended himself and he reached for the football and it just broke his stride when he reached for that football and he was just about one hand short of putting a hand on it. You got to run under it. 5.47 is the time remaining. There it is. It's pretty well thrown. He took that long stride. Instead of running under it, I think he could have ran under it and caught it. Pass is complete to Derek Zeno. First down, Saskatchewan. Darrell Wilson made the tackle. And over at that Saskatchewan bench, in the event that he will be called upon to try for three, David Ridgway stays loose. Well, if they, if they go down here and get three or six, they would have really earned it with a rookie quarterback. And uh, you can see why these fans were giving this guy a cheer when he went on the field. They knew something I didn't know. This guy has plays pretty well. He's got a pretty strong arm. That's, that was Jack Rota's evaluation early in the year, and he never had a chance to play him. But he does show a pretty good right. Gain of 16. It's first and 10. Denny Ferdinand on the draw play. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Gary Doolin. As a matter of fact, he may have lost yards. Harold Smith was Jack Goda's leading passer in preseason play. He was scouted by Saskatchewan at the 1984 Freedom Bowl. In 1984, he attended the Edmonton Eskimo training camp. The pass is complete to Craig Ellis. He was hit by Frank Robinson, a solid hit as he reached up to catch that football. Well, they put a safety blitz also on that play. Smith being pretty sharp, dumped that ball inside real quick to Ellis. That's good play. Well, this guy's a pretty good runner too, isn't he? He have a pretty good opportunity right here if everybody was covered to make this three or four yards himself. Come again. Third down gamble, incomplete. Craig Ellis was the intended receiver, and Frank Robinson was all over him. Fans won an interference call. Not going to get it. The Argonauts are going to take over. They're coming after him with a blitz, trying to dump inside to Ellis. Frank gets a hand up and gives him a good shove. See, the thing that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders have against them right now is that number one, Toronto's got the ball, and number two, even if they're forced to kick. Walter Bender was dropped for a loss of three yards by Charles Bennett. Even if they're forced to kick, Alyssa can get that ball up in the air. What I was looking at, this man right here saw the halfback blitz coming, and Saskatchewan has that guy up there. He blitzes, and that's what caused the problem. He was signaling to the quarterback, here he comes, here he comes, and then didn't block him. You're not going to make that play when you got a halfback blitzing outside. 
3.02 is the time remaining in the ball game. The Argos lead by three. Next week at 1 Eastern, the Eastern Final, two weeks from today, we will have the Western Final from Vancouver. Three oh two is the time remaining here at Taylor Field, the final game of the 1985 Canadian Football League season. And the Toronto Argonauts are looking at second and 12. Ricky Turner doing a good job of running, but he is a yard short of the first down. Let's see where they spot it. He had to get beyond the 50-yard line. I think they're going to uh, spot the ball right at the 50. However, it is close enough for a measurement. Calvin Prinster was the injured Toronto player. about a yard short of the first down and Bob Abilovich says to Ricky Turner who had moved off to that Toronto bench stay out there go after it with 243 remaining well if, it, if they can sustain this drive and make it right here it's wonderful if they don't make it right here their OB is going to take a lot of criticism for not kicking the football with the wind at his back Eddie Lowe coming up trying to make the hit makes the hit and he just doesn't get enough of him. and then Turner does the wise thing Ricky Turner gets a few more yards and then hits the deck I know he thought he had the first down but he come up a little short so now he's gonna have to go get it and Ricky Turner has the first down he followed the left side of that offensive line and it will be first and 10 Toronto. They are at their own 52-yard line with now 2.22 left in the game. Boy, that's a different quarterback sneak if I've ever seen one. And this program is copyright. It's strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or exhibition in whole or in part without the written consent of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation is strictly prohibited. Ricky Turner faked the inside handoff, rolled out to the right away from Rick Moore and slid into the 48-yard line, very close to another Toronto first down. That's what Turner does so well, running with that ball. It's a good play. He pulled him. That was the whole idea. When you when you run naked boot like, like that, you have to make the first fake and fool somebody, and he did. Then it's his ability got him outside, got him down close to a first down. Touchdown at the 50-yard line. Walter Bender gets the first down. Driving through to the 45 with now 143 remaining in the game. Right now it's 29 to 26. And if they can just get five yards further, and I don't even think they have to get any farther to get the point, and that will make uh, that will make the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders go a long way to score a touchdown with a rookie quarterback. This one point's gonna mean an awful lot to them. And they may get close enough to get three out of it or even a touchdown. Walter Bender again trying to go inside. Picks up two yards. Now the thing that Bob Obilovich is stressing from the sidelines more than anything else is hold on to that football. Don't turn it over. That's right. Because with Alisic and his foot, they'll get that extra point and make it very difficult on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. This might be the time, Leo, with the ball in that hash to, to sprint Ricky Turner to the left. And if he doesn't like what he sees, run with the ball. Get him outside, because I think if I'm a Saskatchewan Rough Rider now, I'm going after him. I'm going to force him to do something. I'm going to get, if he goes in that pocket, I'm going to blitz him. Uh, you know, the safest thing in the world is let that quarterback keep the ball himself. That's right, that's what I mean. Get him outside. Don't exchange it. Hold on to it, and make sure if you run with it to get both hands on it, and forget about trying to make long runs or anything else. Just protect it. 
Well, it's been a long fall for the Toronto Argonauts from Grey Cup champions in 1983 to out of the playoff picture for 1985, a last place finish in the Eastern Conference. Well, you got to feel good for Coach Bob Obilovich if uh, his football team can win this last game. And uh, on the other side of the ledger, you've really got to feel let down for Jack Goda because when you stand on that sidelines and you're about 26 to 7 ahead in a ball game like this, you just feel that you're gonna, your luck has changed and you're going to win one. Ricky Turner throwing for Terry Greer incomplete. Well, I think that's the last thing I'd be doing is throwing that ball deep like that with the chance of getting it intercepted. 116 now, the time remaining in the ball game. I liked your idea better, Ron. Roll out there, and if there was any chance at all that Terry Greer was going to have anybody near him run with the football himself. Well, they got away with it. I think that was the idea. That I think he just figured he could get the ball to Greer, and I think if Greer would have been covered in his, he has to make that decision. And he could have ran with the football and he got away with it this time. A lot of times you don't. Hank Alisic, who they gotta go after. Hit an 83-yarder on his last punt to improve his overall average for the afternoon, stands at midfield. And oh. another towering kick into the end zone. It will bounce through. And that makes it 30-26. The Toronto Argonauts in front of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 1.10 is the time left to play. That time, a 68-yard punt by Hank Elisic. A nothing game as far as their position in the standings was concerned coming into this football game. But both Bob Obilovich and his counterpart over at the Saskatchewan bench, Jack Gotta wanted to end the year on a winning note. There's a guy that wants to win, too, along with Coach Jack Gutter right there. You saw Joe Powpow imploring the young quarterback to do something. Craig Ellis makes the catch. No, they rule no catch. Apparently he did not have control of the ball at the 35-yard line when he was hit by Carl Brazley. Brazley rode... Ellis to the turf, and the ball squirted away underneath him. It will be second and 10 from the 35. 104 now remaining in the ball game. Smith gets the time, now decides to run with the ball. There's a penalty fly. I think Laurie Skalrud may have been guilty of a holding call. Oh. He was having some problems trying to keep James Curry away from the play. And that takes the clock down to 55 seconds. And with the yardage tacked on, it makes it second and 20. Holy. Saskatchewan number 65, second down repeated. Well, I said it was Laurie Skalroot. I think he was guilty as well, but the man they <laughs> threw the flag at was Neil Quilder. Harold Smith throws intended for Ray Elgard. It is incomplete. Jerry Nash was defending. And it's now third and 20 with 49 seconds remaining. It's now third and ball game. This is their last chance. Well, that ball really should have been caught. It was thrown in there pretty well. And he had the opportunity to make the catch right in front of a, a three deep zone. Toronto sitting back deep naturally. Well, he's you gotta got to You got to be impressed with his arm, Ron. He drills it. He's got a good arm. He can throw it. You've got to get him some time because he's got to have time now with 20 yards. You've got to have time to get the receivers that far from the field. He won't get a chance to throw as James Curry drops Harold Smith at the 20-yard line and with just 42 seconds remaining, that will be the ball game. 
Well, he had enough time to throw it early, and now he's got to keep moving and moving, and now he's stepping out away from his protective pocket, so Curry just turns and goes out there and gets it. The much-traveled James Curry. As we said earlier, he has played with a number of teams. He's also been in the Calgary and Saskatchewan camps, apart from British Columbia, Winnipeg, Montreal, and now Toronto. There's one happy guy on the sidelines there, Bob Obilovich. He wanted to win this football game. Every coach wants to win, especially after a poor season, finish off with something worthwhile. Walter Bender cuts inside the 15-yard line to about the 13-yard line. The prospects of Toronto winning this ball game early in the third quarter didn't look very good, trailing 26-7, and Conrad Holloway going down, but in the fourth quarter, they have come back. And that just shows you how much statistic means the statistics, I should say, mean because at that time, Don, the statistics were overpoweringly in the favor of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, that's tough to say. Two official languages in this country, and <laughs> <laughs> you have all that difficulty with just one of them. Walter Bender gets the first down. Now 14 seconds remaining. And the Toronto Argonauts are at the 10-yard line. And this will likely be the final play of the ball game. Ricky Turner glances back at the clock. And I'm sure the sign from the sidelines by Coach Obilovich is keep it on the ground. We've won the football game. And Turner drops to one knee, and that does it. The Toronto Argonauts win the final game of the 1985 season with a 30 to 26 win over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Toronto Argonauts finishing the year with a record of six wins and 10 losses. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders at five and 11. We'll be back right after this. stereo system from Citizen Electronics. Chances are someone you know owns a Citizen. And our offensive choice was Craig Ellis, who scored a pair of touchdowns this afternoon and equaled a Saskatchewan club record. And defensively, an ex-Saskatchewan Rough Rider playing the linebacker position only his second game this year for the Toronto Argonauts after being claimed on waivers from Winnipeg. But he recovered that fumble in the end zone and played a strong game defensively throughout the afternoon for Toronto. Well, I think he did. I think it was a good football game, really. I think both teams were ready to play today, and as long as the, the longer the game went, the more intensity was that was in the football game, Leo. Well, I think sometimes, Ron, when they say that it's a nothing game, that the players revert back to really liking to play the game because the pressure is off. They have no chance to get in the playoffs. They're just going to go out there and try to fatten their batting averages, catch some passes, make some completions. And I think they went out there and had fun this afternoon. Both sides played well. It wasn't too much fun for Jack Goda, though. Well, that's the end of the 1985 regular season. Now the second season, so to speak, gets underway with semifinal games next Sunday. The one we'll be covering, Olympic Stadium in Montreal, the Concords against the Ottawa Rough Riders, despite the fact that Ottawa won both regular season games. Who do you like? I think Ottawa. I just think for, for some reason Ottawa will get the job done. We'll see what happens. Well, I'm glad you committed yourself, Rod, because I'm not going to commit myself to that. The Montreal Concord have surprised me in this last couple ball games. I thought that they were completely out of it. Never thought they had a chance to do anything, and Ottawa surprised me that they allowed themselves to be beaten in a couple football games that I thought that they should have won. So I think it's a toss-up, and you know, at playoff time, anything can happen. Always is. I mean, it's it's the way it should be. I mean, That's right. If, you, if, if either team goes in not expecting to win, I mean, what's the game all about? <laughs> well, the only coach in the league with an undefeated record, Gary Durchick, will be leading his Montreal Concords against the Ottawa Rough Riders in that one. What about the Edmonton-Winnipeg game? Well, now, that's a different story. I think the Bombers' home field advantage is going to make some difference, but it's going to be tough. Well, the Bombers have been there before. They have a veteran football team, and uh, I'm not too sure that Dunnigan is completely back off of his injury, so I'd have to go with the Bombers, too. Okay, we'll have that Montreal-Ottawa game for you next Sunday afternoon. Now to CFL Control and Brian Williams.
All right, thank you, Don Whitman. The final score, you see it there, 30 to 26. The Toronto Argonauts winning. A look at the Western Division standings. The BC Lions won on Friday to wrap up first place. The Western semifinal is one week from today. The Edmonton Eskimos, losers today in Montreal at Winnipeg. We look at the Eastern standings. Hamilton finishes in first by virtue of the record against Montreal. Montreal will host the Ottawa Rough Riders. We'll have it next Sunday at 1 o'clock. It's interesting. Both Saskatchewan and Calgary would have missed the playoffs even if they were in the Eastern Conference. I'm Brian Williams. Talk to you again next Sunday afternoon. For now, so long, everyone, from CFL Control in Toronto. Our executive producer is John Spaulding. And today's show produced out of...